from Royal Stadium in Kansas City, NBC Sports presents Game 3 of the 1980 World Series. The National League champions, the Philadelphia Phillies versus the American League champions, the Kansas City Royals. Brought to you by Lohenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lohenbrow. By Ford and your local Ford dealer, who invite you to test drive the new 1981 Ford cars and trucks. By Allstate Insurance Company, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by the Gillette Swivel Razor, the new disposable with a moving head for the swivel eye shade. Royal Stadium, a part of the Harry S. Truman Sports Complex in Kansas City on a beautiful night. Temperature some 59 degrees, and these Kansas City fans, they have been waiting, and they're ready for their ball club. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Garagiola, and tonight I want to talk about the fans. You hear the cheering, and don't think those ball players don't hear the cheering. It's just that booing gets more publicity. And tonight is the first time these Kansas City fans fans have seen their ball players since they beat the Yankees and came to this World Series. As far as the players are concerned, I think Amos Otis said it all. He said, hey, in the last three games, we haven't had anybody cheering for us. It'll be a different story tonight, maybe. Well, Tom Seaver is with us again, and it'll be pitching that will determine that, Tom. Well, Joe, you know, if these Kansas City fans want something to cheer about, the Royal staff is going to have to come up with somebody to stop these Phillies hitters when there's men on base. Every time the Phillies do get somebody on base they've been hitting at an incredible 571 clip. It's going to be up for Rich Gale 13 game winner a real big guy six foot seven power pitcher and he's the hardest thrower on the Royal staff. For the Phillies it's going to be a veteran Dick Ruthen 13 game 17 game winner who over the winter had elbow surgery and came back to have a very consistent year. As a matter of fact since the All Star game He's been at least a, a, the most consistent pitcher on the Philly staff. So tonight, two right-handers, Rich Gale for the Royals and Dick Ruthman for the Phillies. Tony Kubek, your thoughts? All right, Tom. In games one and two, Philadelphia played the kind of baseball that put them in this World Series. Kansas City really simply did not. Kansas City had opportunities, did not take advantage of them. I do think, however, the Royals will win at least at least two of the next three ball games for several reasons. They have tailored this team for this big ballpark. It seems obvious, maybe an oversimplification, but when you bat last as you do at home, you can make up for a lot of mistakes you made the first few innings. But the most important one, I think, will be that this team has better power and more speed that they use very well against right-handed pitching. The Phillies are scheduling three right-handed pitching the next three ball games. That's important for the Royals, I think. But Joe, some very important numbers, I believe, for the Phillies. Of the last, last 29 ball games they've played on the road, they've won 23. So they don't mind playing on the road at all. But you know, to put it in focus, Kansas City still trailing two to nothing. I talked to my favorite philosopher, Yogi Berra, and again he put it in focus. It was an old line, but he said for Kansas City, it got late very early. And now let's go to the PA announcer and listen to the introductions. And now let's meet tonight's starting lineup for the Phillies. Here's the Phillies manager, Dallas Green. In the regular season, he hit 339 and set a record for stolen bases by a Philly rookie with 33, the left fielder, Lonnie Smith. He holds the major league record with 10 200 hit seasons, the first baseman, Pete Rose. He led the National League in 1980 with 48 home runs. The third baseman, Mike Schmidt. He set personal records with 33 doubles and 87 RBIs in 1980. Here's the right fielder, Bake McBride. He had seven game-winning hits while appearing in only 62 games in 1980. Here's the designated hitter, Keith Moreland. 
He's the first and only Philly outfielder to ever win a gold glove. Center fielder Gary Maddox. Voted the most valuable player of the National League Championship Series. Here's the Phillies second baseman Manny Trio. He went into 1980 with the highest lifetime fielding percentage by any shortstop in the history of Major League Baseball. Here's shortstop Larry Boa. Here's a three-time National League All-Star, the catcher Bob Boone. And warming up in the bullpen, tonight's starting pitcher for the Phillies, Dick Ruthven. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for the 1980 American League champions, your Kansas City Royals. Here's the Royals manager, Jim Fry. In 1980, he became only the second player in the history of baseball to record 100 or more hits from both sides of the plate. The Royals left fielder, Willie Wilson. Winner of three gold gloves. He was the most valuable player in the American League Championship Series. Here's Kansas City's own Frank White. The first player in 30 years to average an RBI per game played. His 390 batting average led the American League in 1980. Here's third baseman George Brett. He became only the third player in history to hit two home runs in the opening game of the World Series. The first baseman, Willie Mays Akins. He led the Royals in 1980 with 39 doubles. Here's the designated hitter, Hal McRae. He has won three gold gloves and is a five-time All-Star selection. Here's the center fielder, Amos Otis. He had his best year as a major leaguer in 1980, hitting 294 in 130 games. Here's the right fielder, Clint Hurdle. In 1980, he was named for the American League All-Star team for the third time. Here's the Royals catcher, Daryl Porter. He hit 364 in the American League Championship Series. Here's the shortstop, UL Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, an invitation from the Royals to stand and salute the colors as presented by the U.S. Army Combined Arms Center Color Guard from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Rich Gale out warming in the bullpen for the Kansas City Royals being watched by pitching coach Billy Connors. Now let's 
honor America with our national anthem, which will be sung by Staff Sergeant Edwin Crump. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Well, if you don't think these fans aren't ready, the PA announcer forgot to mention Rich Gale, the starting pitcher. They started to chant, we want Rich, we want Rich. They are ready, and we are ready on a beautiful night here in Kansas City. Game three, and we'll be back with a start in just a moment. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Tonight's just right. Must be a full moon. Hardly any wind. And the blowing brows cold. Let it be sure beats the office. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Sure hope the fish don't bother us. <laughs> See this little baby? No other pocket camera does what it does. It's unique because only the new Kodak Ectralite cameras have built-in Sensolite flash. Sensolite flash turns itself on and flashes automatically when you need more light even turns itself off. You'll never worry about flash again. These new cameras with Sensolite flash are the easiest to use Kodak pocket cameras ever. I trust my stories to cameras and film from Kodak, America's storyteller. Now that the rough stuff's over, I'm gonna get swivelized. You mean civilized. I mean swivelized. Introducing Gillette's new swivel razor, the only disposable with a moving head. Is this the beginning of swivelization? Right. The swivel razor's moving head hugs your face. No other disposable shaves you closer, more comfortably. I demand my swivel rights. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Try Gillette's new twin blade swivel razor. Any other disposable is unswivelized. <clears throat> Pitch, hit, and run. Pitching for accuracy, hitting for distance, and running the bases for speed. Over two million boys and girls have tested their baseball skills in Major League Baseball's official youth program. Baseball congratulates our 1980 finalists. Pitch, hit, and run. The dream comes true. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, last August, two children trapped in a fire in their home and unconscious were rescued by three Kansas City firefighters, Captain Jay Ricketts, Frank Tatone, and Louis Wright. These men saved the two children by using mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and massaging the heart. As another example of how baseball cares, the training of firemen in CPR is a part of a community program sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Ewing Kaufman that has a goal of training 100,000 Kansas Cityans in the next two years. We direct your attention to the home plate side of the Royals dugout where the three men will throw out a ceremonial first pitch in recognition of their heroics. Gentlemen, fire when ready. A tremendous story 
And the three brave firemen. And now they'll listen to the roar for the Kansas City Royals. for Kansas City. Willie Wilson in left. Amos Otis in center. Clint Hurdle in right. George Brett back at third. UL Washington at short. Frank White at second. Willie Mays Aikens at first base. Daryl Porter back behind the plate. And Rich Gale, the pitcher for Kansas City. The lineup. Lonnie Smith in left field. Pete Rose at first base. Mike Schmidt at third base. Big McBride in the cleanup spot. Keith Moreland is the designated hitter. Luzinski is here, feeling better, but Moreland is the DH. Gary Maddox in center field. Manny Trio in second base. Larry Boa, the shortstop. Bob Boone, the catcher. Rich Gale, a big right-hander, and there he is, Tom Seaver. Big Rich Gale, six foot seven, Joe, 225 pounds. Just 26 years old. He to the Phillies will look like more like a National League pitcher than anybody they've seen so far. He's a power pitcher, has a good riding fastball, will sink it once in a while. His curveball is just so so. It's a rolling curveball. He use it sometimes to get ahead of the left handers. A slider is a good hard slider in on the hands. Change up is so so. Two good basic pitches, fastball and slider. Power pitcher. He's a pitcher that can intimidate you. He's so big and throws so hard. Well, this ballpark will be a factor, as you heard Tony talk about it. It's a good sized ballpark as you look down the line at 330, but the corners are treacherous. Both Big McBride and Lonnie Smith working on it. That's the left field going into center field. The alley is 385, dead center field about 415, 385 in right center field, and 330 down the right field line. All the seats here are geared towards second base. It's a beautiful ballpark. The artificial surface, not quite as fast as that in Philadelphia, Tony. There are the dimensions, and a pitcher can get away, I believe, why make a bad curve ball. If you get him at the big part of the ballpark in right left center field, you could be helped by it. But the ball does carry fairly well from the 385 sign in right center field down the right field line. The wind blows that way at times. Tom, I was interested in the point you made. You said Gale is more like a National League pitcher. Were you saying that most of the Kansas City staffs are more breaking ball pitchers and he is a power pitcher? Well, the two pitchers that the Phillies have seen so far are really uh, their first game, Dennis Leonard, sinker, slider, and in the second game, a, a pitcher that changed speeds more. Okay. Nestle okay. seems to have pitchers that throw a little bit harder. At least that's what yeah. Schmidt and Rosen, those guys, would say. The umpires right now are behind home plate removing some gear with the bat boy. Paul Pryor is the home plate umpire. Don Denking. There you see Pryor with the bat boy. The umpires, uh, Pryor behind the plate. Don Denkinger, American League, Pryor from the National League. Denkinger's at first base. Dutch Renard, National League at second. Nick Bremigan at third base in the American League. Harry Wendelstadt down the left field line, and Bill Kunkel is down in the right field line. Wendell Stanton National League, Bill Kunkel from the American League. So we're all set. Gale against Lonnie Smith, the first pitch. Strike one. This ballpark holds 40,628. That's the official number in the Kansas City Media Guide. 40,628. It'll be interesting to see what the attendance is. Misses. One ball and one strike. Smith is two for seven so far, a 286 average, no home runs, no RBIs in this World Series. One ball, two strikes. Tom, I think it was interesting what Billy Connors told us. He said that when he watched Rich Gale warm up, Rich is kind of a laid-back kind of guy. I guess that's the way they'd say it in California. And sometimes you need stimulation. He said he was going to go to him as he warmed up and say, listen, you want to pitch this ball game? Go get it. If not, let me know. He's trying to stir him up a little bit. It's a base hit. Hurdle plays it on the first hop, and Lonnie Smith is on. We've said it so many times, there's no other way to say it. He can run and probably will. And as big as Gale is on the mound, by the time he unfurls, here's the base set. Looked like he fisted a little bit, Tom, but just fought it off to the opposite field. 
But with Gale having to unwind with that big height, he does not quick to first base, nor is he quick to home plate. So Smith's going to try him. Batter is Pete Rose. He is 0 for 7 in this World Series, but he has been a factor. Brett has moved in close to third. Smith stole 33 bases in 46 attempts this season. Inside, ball one. Ball game just underway. No score. A leadoff single by Smith. Ball one to Rose. say Billy Connors has worked with Rich Gale and what he tries to do because he's such a big man he'll have a slower delivery to home plate what he's trying to do is to get him to pop that left knee up instead of swing it out if he pops it up he'll be much quicker coming to home plate one ball and one strike nobody out back easily don't know if Gale does it every time, but on the one pitch he threw home, when he went home, he picked those hands up very high above his head after he came from the belt position. And that takes a little more time. Smith was gone, but he stumbled a hit and run play, and now he's going to work on the ground. And it's one ball and two strikes. Well, we told you in the first game, his nickname skates. He slipped down the dirt. He really doesn't get a very big lead, does he, Tom? He well, like Morgan and Brock at times, they would get a lead with one foot on the artificial surface. He's got both on the dirt. It looks right. like he relies almost entirely on his speed, Tony. Lonnie Smith. Throws the ball right by Pete upstairs. Paul Pryor, the umpire behind the plate, said it was a foul tip, and Darrell Porter hang on to it. So a strike, a strikeout for Rich Gale. It brings up Mike Schmidt. Tom, it's interesting watching Gale when he holds the runners on, how he sneaks a peek even before there he is. Look at him. Now he, he's there's twice he does, and that's it. He doesn't. Every time he's done it, it's been only two quick looks, and that's even before he goes into the stretch. What good is that? Well, I think he's had so much trouble and did have so much trouble last year, Joe, that he, he wants to hold the runners close. There's a strike. And they're trying to do it by making sure that he's conscious of those runners over there, making sure that that runner comes off the bag and stops, make sure they don't get the walking lead, and then he can work on his quick delivery to home plate. You think it's merely a message saying, I know you're there? I know you're there. I'm aware of you. I'm going to I'm going to make you stop. I'm not going to let you get a walking lead and I'm going to throw over there every so often. He started to go stumble and somebody from the bench you can hear it on that great microphone. There he goes which is what a catcher likes to hear. But he spins it. He, he better put some chains or something on over there. If he can ever keep his feet on the ground, Tony, I think he's got a chance to try for a stolen base. <laughs> I don't know if he's deking on that one or not. He sure hasn't been able to keep his footing, has he? One ball, one strike, one out. Two and one. Now here's manager's delight, but you got a big power hitter up there. What do you do? Joe, you're talking to Tom about the eyes as we look at Bake McBride on deck. I heard early win and several other uh, pitchers talk about that for a right hander that a pitcher when used to look over his shoulder and find out how far he could close that shoulder and tilt his head and when the base runner went out of his sight he knew he had too big of a lead and he would throw over so he's trying to find that spot I think didn't get it two balls and two strikes one man out base runner is Lonnie Smith no score top of the first let's see if he takes it two quick looks over there seems to be his habit even before he goes to the stretch. There's one. One more time. Last pitch that Schmidt swung at was up high. It's interesting with the National League umpire back there prior. If they laid off that pitch, it probably would be a ball, but he's thrown pretty hard. Three and two. You talk about early situations. Here's one now. 
I would think it would be a strikeout, throw him out. And you don't be out of the inning. If he gets a base hit, you're first and third with one out. So on one pitch, you're riding a pretty crucial situation. One. Two. There he goes. Fouls it back. He didn't have a good jump at all. It was more of a hit and run situation than anything else. He strikes him out. He's out. But then he kind of a throw. What they're trying to do with Gale, and you were talking about the two looks over, Joe, that he's taken almost every time. They want him to look over twice so that they make sure that the base runner has stopped. So he's not getting a walking lead. If he looks over once and the guy keeps on walking off like that, he can take off and have his momentum going towards second. So they want him to stop that man and freeze him. He does it very early. There's one look. early in Schmidt's career one. one year he struck out 180 times but he would not start a runner like Smith two in fact there goes the runner it's popped up foul territory Willie Mays Aikens may have room nope you know let me point something out that base running and obviously I'm doing it from what I hear is a rhythm thing but our guys in the truck have picked up the rhythm Mike and Harry, Mike Wiseman, Harry Coyle, with that shot, they went to to uh, Gale's eyes, cut to the runner, came back, and it was Gale's eyes, just boom, boom, boom. There was definite rhythm. Let's see if we can do it again. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. One thing, Joe, that Gale has done here, he's let Mike Schmidt swing in a two-one pitch, and now he's thrown two three and two pitches to him very difficult to pitch to a power hitter like this when you give him that advantage there he goes he stumbled but it's ball four and they would have had him trapped Lonnie Smith stopped between first and second he has slipped every time he's tried to start every Ready single four. time as I don't know what kind of shoes he's using many players do not use cleats on this they use the rubber uh, kind of spikes watch his foot he's done that how many times and just this at bat by Schmidt, about a half a dozen. Every time he's been over there. He better go like. back and do what Morgan did in the championship series. Put on a different pair of shoes when he runs. There he is again. George Thomas is the groundskeeper. He's not known to doctor it, but it's not beyond him to doctor. If they got great speed on this ball yeah. club, why would he do it? So you got to believe that it's Lonnie Smith. Bake McBride. He takes a strike. One man out. One strike to count. Keith Moreland on deck. He's the designated hitter. McBride, four for seven, a 571 average in this World Series. He has one home run, four runs batted in. doing something like that would be the late Jackie Robinson you held that ball he'd give it a quick start and stop and then all of a sudden you put your arm down he'd be sliding into third well Clemente used to do that around first base he'd round the bag well halfway between first and second the center fielder or right fielder would throw behind him he'd keep on going to second Willie Mays here is Keith Moreland the designated hitter he's two for four in this World Series one RBI there are two outs no score
with better ideas from Germany, Japan, America, from around the world, introducing a world car. The new Ford Escort, built in America with better ideas from around the world. Escort has higher gas mileage ratings than Rabbit, Accord, Corolla Hatchback, yet it is roomier inside. And Escort has four-wheel independent suspension, front-wheel drive. Ford Escort, built in America to take on the world. I think Governor Reagan, in a crisis situation, would be very apt to use military force. We really have to keep our heads cool. And I don't think that uh, Reagan is cool. He's sort of like the old Western movies, you know, go out and shoot him dead type attitude. And I think that could really get us into a lot of trouble. Reagan doesn't stop to think of things before he does it. That scares me about Ronald Reagan. It really does. My decision is made. I'm going to stick with President Carter. On November 4th, re-elect President Carter. There it is, Royal Stadium, and I'm sure they can hear it way up there, this enthusiasm in this ballpark, Tony. Sure can. Let's take a look, Joe, at this defense. Lonnie Smith in left. He's got a lot of room to cover out there in left center. Gary Maddox in center, Bake McBride in right, Mike Schmidt at third, Larry Bow at short, Manny Trio in the second baseman, Pete Rose at first, Bob Boone the catcher, and Dick Ruth Ruthven the pitcher. The lineup that he'll be facing tonight. Willie Wilson leads it off in left field. Batting second is Frank White. George Brett at third base. Willie Mays Aikens at first base. Hal McRae at the H. Amos Otis is in center field. Clint Hurdle in right field. The catcher is Daryl Porter. Batting ninth, UL Washington, the shortstop. And pitching for Philadelphia, Dick Ruthven, 17 and 10 during 1980. Joe Ruthven, 29 years old, 6'3", 190, was 17-10 with a 3.55 ERA. And you'll see a pitcher that uses just about all the basic things of pitching. It is ball one. Willie Wilson, one for nine. He is disruptive. He makes things happen. Out of play, one ball and one strike. may be in for an exciting sight if he has a chance for an inside the park home run. We were lucky to see two of them in this ballpark and it is some race Wilson against the ball. Two balls and one strike. He tied for the league lead in triples with 15. Griffin of Toronto was the other man. Chopper trio short hop he's got it one out Dick Ruthven as we look at trio gets the first assist Ruthven 17 and 10 six complete games one shutout 33 starts six complete games made one relief appearance that was in the championship series. One man out, Frank White, who is two for eight, a 250 average, no home runs, no runs batted in. Ball one. Joe Rhythm's got about three different kinds of fastballs. He throws a sailing fastball. They throw a ball, a fastball with a little tail into the right hander. Foul straight back. Look, Look out. out. That almost got us. One ball, one strike. Tom, he also does something that's kind of distracting as far as the hitter is concerned. As he goes into his takeaway, he looks at the ball in the glove and then he looks to the ground. I know I'd always want him looking at me, but he looks away twice. Well, that's an unusual thing for a pitcher to do. I know personally I do the same thing. Bunt and foul down the third baseline. When he looks at the ground like that, that can really throw you off as a hitter. Well, the logic for a for a pitcher when he does that. There's Gordy McKenzie, third base coach for the Royals. When you, what I do, my estimation, what I try to do in my mind is to visualize where I'm going to throw the ball. I don't need to look at it the entire time. And then when I do come back to home plate, I can pick it up that much more quickly. One, two. Outside. Two and two. Tom, tell me, this sounds impressive to me, does it to you? 
He's pitched 223 and he's given up just nine home runs. That's not allowing a whole lot, is it? High hopper right to Mike Schmidt. And earned two away. You know, Joe, he hasn't given up many home runs, but he's given up a lot of hits in the innings that he's pitched. 223 innings pitched and 241 hits. The home run number is impressive, but then on the other hand, he's given up more hits than he has innings pitched, so it's almost like a washout. He has a very unusual motion, and you'll see he comes there and looks down at the, at the ground and then comes back and picks it up. Just as he starts for home plate, he picks up his spot at home plate. So George Brett with two outs and nobody on. It's low ball one. Hope they, you saw the interview uh, with Brian Gumble in our pregame show where Brett talked about his problem. I tell you he is so tired of it. Just talking about it and he around the batting cage he was just joking about it as he said in the pregame show. There's a strike one and one and. Everybody asked me, said, listen, it's all behind me. It's all behind me. That's all he kept saying. Does this defensive alignment in the outfield, we get a chance to show you, look a little different than in Philadelphia? They're playing him a little bit more to pull, I believe. Maddox in right center. That may mean they may go to more off speed stuff to him, hit to that big part of the ballpark. Well hit. This ball may be out of here. It is. 1 0. Listen to this crowd. Sat back down, and I looked over my shoulder when he hit that ball. And his former manager is in our booth, Whitey Herzog. And all he did was turn and said, "Isn't he something?" He really is, and it may be the spark they needed as Willie Mays Aikens takes the first pitch for strike one. Just reflect a little bit and know how much he must have been hurting to take himself out of that ball game in Philadelphia. Bouncing ball. Trio backhands in. Pulls Rose off the back, but he stayed there long enough to make the third out. But George Brett with a tremendous home run gives the Kansas City Royals the lead. Here's the swing. One of the cliches in baseball, Joe, as you know, don't throw left handed hitters down and in. That seems to be where the power, their power is, and that's exactly where Ruthen threw that ball. And so as we complete one inning of play here, Kansas City one, Philadelphia nothing. And coming up for Philadelphia in the second inning, it'll be Gary Maddox, Manny Trio, and Larry Boa. Allstate challenges you. Find your homeowner's insurance policy, then bring it in and compare. I personally accept Allstate's challenge. Because all homeowner's insurance is not alike. Allstate could show you ways to get more for your money. Allstate's thrown us a challenge. Keep looking. Allstate Homeowners Insurance could give you more value for the money. So find your policy and bring it in. I found it. You found it? You're in good hands with Allstate. That's a promise. Rodeo cowboy never settle and down. Don't you ever get lonesome from your traveling when the day's work is done and the competition was a little rough, it's good to get back to some easy riding and a friend. That's what friendly skies are all about. I spent the whole day on my feet. I wish I could say that. Spread your wings, fly away. Nothing's all that far. Follow the sunshine. Got three fingers. Reach for a star. What was that bull's name? Bad medicine. And he was. Friendship on high, where the eagle dares 
Friend, that's the nicest ride I've had in a long time. By the friendly sky. Rodeo, cowboy, there you go once again. But I know you'll be back right now with a friend. Charlotte, will you marry me? But her last chance at happiness explodes when Clemma returns. I'm going to marry her, Charlotte. Lynn Redgrave stars in Centennial Saturday. In the foreground, you see Royal Stadium in the background. It is Arrowhead Stadium where the Chiefs play. A baseball park, a football stadium. They love their sports here in Kansas City. What a sight. Here is Gary Maddox. He is one for six in this World Series. First pitch fouls it off. Strike one. In pregame practice, it did not look like Gary was uh, running that well. You see him loosening up. He got hit that ball off his left leg. Left the ball game, game number two. Here's a one strike pitch. Inside, one and one. If you don't think things aren't magnified, pretty obvious from the George Brett coverage, you'd think he was Bo Derrick or something where they've been talking. They didn't say Max got hit on the knee. They found 10 to 15 centimeters of water on his knee. Brett, nice play, long throw. They get it. Does he mean something to this ball club, or does he mean something to this club? I think sometimes people, because he hit 390, look at him as a one-dimensional ball player. And not true. He has good range. He's playing up even with a bag. This isn't a sensational play, but he had to move a little bit. Very strong arm, as you can see, the ball just rides over to first base, but he can do a lot more than just hit that guy. He's very aggressive fielder also. Very aggressive. He goes after everything. Tony, he said in the pregame that in Philadelphia he moved up so he wouldn't have to move too much. And then he said, I know I could have gotten two balls that went by. That's how badly he was hurt. Trio fouls it off. There is Commissioner Kuhn. His wife Louisa. Erwin Sigelstein from NBC. Louisa Kuhn and the commissioner hot dog and baseball and they're happy one to nothing Kansas City Manny trio that was a pretty good fastball right there I don't know how fast it was but it, it sounded fast. So I think it's interesting that in the first three ball games of this World Series, neither manager has used the same batting lineup twice. They've changed every ball game, taking advantage of maybe scouting reports, who it's which pitch. The guy might be hurt. That that helps. And of course, Marlon DH in the day, he had a pretty good day, DH, and so he's back in there instead of Luzinski. Trio regrouping. Gale. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one nothing. Second inning, Kansas City leading. Look up out. the middle, off his foot. <laughs> Willie Mays Akins went to the back. I think Frank White was expecting him to uh, Akins to go get the ball, but Willie was going to cover the back, so it's a base hit for Trio. That was I don't think he knew. Play. I don't think he knew where it was. As soon as the ball is hit, the first baseman's job is to get to the bag. He took his eyes off the ball. It hits him on the left ankle or left foot. Aiken's back was to the ball. Had he caught it, he wouldn't have had anybody anyway because Gale wasn't covering. Here it is again, Tom. He's not rated as a as a, an outstanding fielder, Rich Gale. It wouldn't have made any difference. There's Manny Trio beating out that single. If he had to be an outstanding fielder, he'd have never caught that ball. Manny hit that ball right on the butt. So with one out, base runner at first. Here's Larry Boy. He's two for seven. Base hit in the right field. Trio is rounding second. He'll hold up. Hurdle fires it back in. Look out. Brett behind UL Washington. So it's first and second. One man out. And the batter is Bob Boone. And then we go to the top of the order. Lonnie Smith on deck. Rich Gale on that throw from Hurdle. Fortunately, Brett did leave the bag because when UL Washington tipped it, Gale was not behind third base backing up the play. He was very slowly getting over. In this World Series, Boone has the highest batting average, both clubs hitting at 600. He has two doubles. On base percentage of .714. It's 
Tom mentioned, oh, this team is hitting very well. That's the stat that you mentioned in your little pregame summary, uh, Tom. 571 with men on base. You know, Tony, they've done it against the three best Kansas City pitchers, too. Leonard and Gura and Quisenberry. That's the thing that impresses me about the Phillies so far. Two balls, no strikes. The bullpen for the Royals starts going immediately. I tell you, they got a statistic down here, and I talk about the magnification of the World Series. You know what the slugging percentage for Aikens is? 1,286. Boone is 1,000. I thought 1,000 would be perfect. I guess Four. it's inflation. 4,000. 4,000. You need a home run every time up. Bullpen, Rennie Martin. He pitched well. One of the ball games. Where in the world did that shot come from? You got a helicopter up above it? Three balls, no strikes. There's the strike. Three and one, one man out. Kansas City leading one to nothing, top of the second. Trio is at second base. Bo is at first. Our producer Mike Weissman telling me that was from our gondola, similar to the one we used in the gondola in the Astrodome in the All-Star game in 1969. You were in that thing, weren't you? You bet. All four of the bases are loaded. And the top of the order, Lonnie Smith is the batter. Gale is in trouble. Jim Fry. He's got a one to nothing lead, but it's in jeopardy right now. Here comes Billy Tom. There is Dallas Green. Sitting nice and pretty right now. Win both games at home in Philadelphia. Let's pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC television network. KNBC Los Angeles. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek and Tom Seaver as we look at Royal Stadium in Kansas City. 59 degrees at game time, a jam-packed ballpark, and it's one to nothing, Kansas City leading top of the second. But the Philadelphia Phillies have the bases loaded with one man out, and Lonnie Smith, who singled his first time up the batter. He is tough to double up. He had better hit it right in the butt right at somebody. Strike one. I think that's one reason that Gale is pitching off the stretches to try to keep Trio as close as he can so that if it comes back to him, they might have a chance to double him up. It's one reason, another one to hold Boa close at second so he might not score in a hard single. And also, if you can prevent that runner at first by getting a little shorter lead, you can give your second baseman or shortstop, the pivot man, a better shot in the double play. Which in the other case, he may not have his good stuff from the stretch. Right back to Gale. He don't oh. let it go. He missed home plate. He just pulled a rock. That was a bad play by Gale, and it's a lack of anticipation on his part, Tom. He should have had in his mind, and he could go to the plate. No question about it, Joe. What he's got to do is know beforehand when a play like that happens where he's going to go. The ball hit hard back to him. He's either going to go to home or he's going to go to second. He picks up the ball. Evidently, was going to go to second if the ball to try for the double play if the ball was hit to him. Well, Tom, After he missed it, he's got to go home. He's got to get oh, the one out at home right I, there. I, even if he catches, he's got to go home. He's got to come Smith, home. He's got to come home. The catcher tells him every time, "Ball hit back to you. Throw it to me." I, I felt certain that's why he was pitching off the stretch so he could cut Trio's lead, and then he blew it. Here is Pete Rose. Without doubt, his play was at home plate. He had no other place to go other than home. Even if he caught the ball, he should have been going home. You one know, ball, no strikes. Dennis Leonard in game number one lost his composure when he had a 4 nothing lead. When Boa stole him, and Gale loses his composure. They're a young ball club with very little World Series experience. It's high. But I don't know if it's World Series. They played 162 games in the championship series, so I don't know. You don't know. think this is different than anything else? Not, it's different, no question about it, Tony, but you, I don't think you can rely on World Series experience. You've got to have some reflex action. Plus, he hasn't pitched in a couple of weeks. Almost two weeks since Gale's been out in the mound. He wasn't in that championship series. October 5th was the last day he pitched. Well, maybe they did have to introduce him to the mound, give him a road map. 2 nothing pitch. It is low, 3-0. Oh. Of course, these Philadelphia Phillies 
the flow of the game the whole series has been Kansas City gets the lead and Philadelphia says well I guess we better tie him and it makes no difference if it's one run or four runs they play from behind they won the first two games coming from behind three nothing pitch strike the closest that Rich Gale has come to game conditions was last Sunday in Yankee Stadium there's Greg Lozinski the bull with the glasses on at Dallas Green there's Jim Fry but he pitched a simulated game in Yankee Stadium Gale did on last Sunday for 35 minutes pitched some through so many pitches sat down then back up it's not the same though as a time not the same as facing somebody under game game situations Tony and this boy Rich Gale has lost a little bit of con concentration on the mound Jim Fry and the Royal dugout he's gotten a visit from Billy Connors already Kenny Brett came over to visit him once already now Daryl Porter has gone to the mound to give Gale another visit three visits in one inning they wanted him to keep his feet on the ground he's not throwing badly he's throwing hard he's throwing good enough to get out of the inning but he went right behind Pete Rose three and oh got a strike walked him bases are now loaded major leagues leading home run hitter at the plate something situation you certainly don't want to get into Mike Schmidt two outs bases loaded Bake McBride the on deck batter one one we're tied top of the second Schmidt walked his first time up He's pitching off the stretch and now Boa really get a lead Brett was way back there now that's pulled him in a couple steps wouldn't expect Boa to be trying anything with his big hitter up there Fastball ball is low ball one. There's the defense. Deep. They give him both lines fairly well and kind of bunch them. Oh, just a shade in the alleys of the outfield. High fly ball. Wilson, Otis, both there. Otis says, I'll take it. And he does. So that ends the inning, but the Philadelphia Phillies tie it. For the second inning to score, Philadelphia won and Kansas City won. And do up for the Kansas City Royals a designated hitter, Hal McRae, Amos Otis, and Clint Hurdle. Who'll last longer, Rick or Dry Idea Roll On? Give ordinary roll ons this kind of workout, they'll start to give out on you. They're mostly water, but not Dry Idea. Watch. The ordinary roll on here, Dry Idea here. Minutes later, when perspiration starts, much of the ordinary roll-on can wash away, but not Dry Idea. Dry Idea has hardly any water, so it goes on drier, stays on longer, keeps you drier. In fact, you'll give out before Dry Idea. any other name is not the same. Next time you wonder what white wine to drink, think of Gallo Rhine. If you've been thinking about buying or selling a house, but you've heard there's a bad real estate market, call your ERA real estate specialist. We know who's lending money and how to qualify for it. Four out of 10 home buyers come from out of town. With this machine, we can find them. Our buyer protection plan made this home more valuable. Call ERA. We're selling houses. Now more than ever, your ERA real estate specialist is the person you need to know in real estate. America's most versatile performer is back. It's the Steve Allen Comedy Hour with Lucille Ball, Steve Martin, and George Kennedy. One of TV's all-time greats returns Saturday. Number 11. Waterfall in right center field. A beautiful sight. We get set for the bottom half of the second inning here. It's a 1-1 ball game, and Hal McRae, the designated hitter. Today it was Hal McRae Day in Avon Park, Florida. He's had a good World Series so far. Four for seven, a 571 batting average. One strike. Strike two. Tom, Billy Connors was telling us that 
when Ruthven had the surgery, he used to have a great changeup, apparently. Oh, a fastball that could be overpowering and a changeup that really fooled a lot of hitters. And he said he's lost it for some reason. Well, he was traded down to Atlanta, and he got with Andy Messersmith. Off the handle. And Andy, Mess play. Andy Messersmith really taught him how to pitch. Taught him how to keep his cool on the mound and taught him the changeup, which made him a very effective pitcher. And he's always had a pretty good fastball. And this last winter had arm surgery. Took bone chips out of his elbow. And he's not been able to get the changeup back since he's had the surgery. He still has the three good fastballs that he can throw almost in any location, but the changeup has not come back to him. Ball one, one ball, two strikes. I know I said Billy, Billy Connors. We've been talking about him so much. I, of course, meant Bob Boone and Herbst direct. They're the catcher and pitching coach for the Phillies. Here's the one two pitch. It's high, two and two. Ruthven was originally a Phillies number one draft pick in 73, traded to the White Sox in the Jim Cott deal in 1975. He was acquired by the Phillies in 1978 in a trade with the Braves for Gene Garber. Off the handle, Pete Rose giving it a chase, has room, Got it. makes the catch. Nice play by Pete Rose. There's one out. So he, he made that play in the second ball game, late in the game, that may have saved that game. The line drive that Willie Wilson hit down the line. Here's Rose. Boy, he has such great baseball sense. He found that little box there, that temporary box for the camera people. Knew where he was exactly, but that ball that he caught off Willie Wilson slapped down was an amazing play. You, one of the things that I appreciate about Pete Ray, Pete Rose the most, Tony, is I've been, I've, he's been a teammate of mine. He said he's played third base, he's played first base, he's played the infield, he's played the outfield, and become not only one of the greatest hitters of all time, but an outstanding defensive player, no matter what position he plays. Here's Amos Otis, who leads with five base hits in this World Series. Takes it high, ball one. He's hitting at 556. Otis has one home run, four runs batted in. High, two balls, no strikes. You better bet that's a Kansas City Royals fan. Don't know if it's one of the Royals' children. He's counting the pitches for Tom Seaver, <laughs> Paul Moscow up here. So 42 curveball. He's having a good time. Two balls, no strikes. Deep in the hole, ball's got a long throw. It is not in time. Tough play for Larry Moe. He was playing so deep, he had to backtrack. He had the ball in time enough. Not a good jump out of the box, but you can see that his arm has gone downhill the last couple of years. He would have taken that ball a couple of years ago and rifled it there. One of the strongest, most accurate arms of any shortstop. He's yep. lost. He plants that foot, Tom, but he just can't get anything out of it anymore. I was talking to Larry in Philadelphia, and he said that he had tried to get away out of the way of Dave, Par Dave Parker. The last series they played against the Pirates and re-injured his ribcage, and it certainly may still be sore on him. Clint Hurdle takes a curveball over the outside corner and is strike one. Otis a good base runner, 15 for 16 in 1980. It is low, one ball and one strike. Hurdle, one for three in this World Series. Two balls and a strike. And don't take the man down at first base for granted. He has been excellent. Rarely thrown out this year, Otis. The left hand hitter up with this count. He might be going. Boy, nice play. One. That's all they'll get. Boy took a base hit away from Clint Hurdle. And of course, Hurdle lost the base hit because of the base that runner, is. Otis. Boy had a play at second, so there are two away. Brings up Daryl Porter with UL Washington on deck. 
you know, Paul had some, he's had outstanding statistics as far as uh, fielding. I read a stat of an 11-year career before this year, he'd had almost 8,000 chances and made only 128 errors. And how can you handle that many balls and only miss cue on that, that few? About 10 errors a season. You don't think that synthetic turf has anything to do oh, with it. Oh, but he played his first year or two in the old ballpark yeah. in dirt and grass. There's a strike to Daryl Porter. He is 0 for 3 so far. Two men out. 1-1 one, one the score. Bottom of the second. The inside. One ball, one strike. Should have no problem. Steps on the bag to force on hurdle. That ends the inning. So we complete two innings of play here in Kansas City. The score: Philadelphia Phillies one, Kansas City Royals one. And two up for the Phillies in the third. It'll be Big McBride, Keith Moreland, and Gary Maddox. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. In an exclusive interview, Jimmy Cagney talks about doing his first movie in 20 years. And kids in sports, do we start them too young and push them too hard? Next Friday on NBC Magazine. When you save at Bank of America, you get more for your money than interest. You get the safety of California's largest bank, the speed of automatic deposits, a wide choice of savings plans to help your money grow, and the convenience of more than a thousand branches statewide. Get more than interest for your savings dollars with a money convenience system at Bank of America. When people need something in a hurry, the first place they usually look is the yellow pages. And the first things they usually look at are the ads. So if you own a business, take an ad in the GTE Yellow Pages because it quickly gives your customers all the information they need. Hello. Just how exotic are the plants that you specialize in? And in this room, Ben Franklin penned the eternal truth. A penny saved is a penny earned. Excuse me. At Shearson Low Broads, we don't agree. Shearson Low Broads? One of America's leading investment firms. Clear. No, no, this is important, Roger. With today's inflation, that penny might do better in a Shearson managed investment program. Yeah, but who can make sense out of a dollar these days? The answer is Shearson. Picard? Oh. When the question is money, the answer is Shearson. An interview with Henry Kissinger, 6.30 Sunday on News Conference. Kansas City Royals have drawn two million in attendance each of the last three years. They've drawn from all over the Midwest. Drive for miles. It was the last year, two years ago, that the two smallest ballparks in the American League, Fenway Park, and here in Kansas City, they were 1-2 in American League attendance. And boy, they really packed them in. Since they've become a winner, it's been outstanding. And a jam-packed house here tonight. Bake McBride to lead it off. Keith Moreland. The on-deck batter. Ball one. The Royals trailing by two games in this series. You don't have to draw them a picture to know what the situation is. Line drive, base hit, right field. That looked like a high, slow, room service curve. That is probably his fourth best pitch. Billy Connors had tried, he's got to try to throw a little bit, but not for a strike. He has thrown two of those to Reggie Jackson, and Reggie has hit both of them for home runs. Here it is again. Change up up that high in the strike zone, and he doesn't have very good motion, I don't think. It's hard to tell motion from up here, I know, but he kind of slows his delivery. He does. Tony slows his motion down. He got that in a horrible spot. He's lucky it stayed in the ballpark. Here's Keith Moreland. It's a strike. That's one thing about this ballpark, Tom. I, comparing it to Philadelphia, we just came from there. A pitcher can make a few more mistakes in a park like this or Yankee Stadium, and I'm sure there's several big ones in the National League. But in Philadelphia, those mistakes can hurt you a little more. Well, that pitch 
is a pitch Rick Monday calls controlled mediocrity. There goes the runner. It's fouled out of play. The hit and run was on. McBride, good base dealer, 13 to 23. If that was a hit and run play, you could see Moreland tried to hit that ball to right field, and Gale did a good job with that pitch, keeping it inside. We're tied at one apiece here. We're in the third inning. Moreland hits 340 against right handers, 264 against left handers, so that goes that theory about opposites. Inside. One ball, two strikes. This is one of the kids, Keith Marlin, who really helped this Phillies ball club. Dallas Green knew he had to start getting new blood in it. So we got Marlin, who did very well, won some games. The two kid pitchers, Walk and Bystrom, and of course Lonnie Smith. And they all contributed a whole lot. Big lead by McBride. Foul back. Moreland had seven game winning hits. And he only appeared in 62 games. Every time he gets one, if it's not a line drive, he says, Well, it didn't look too purdy, but it was very effective. There are the eyes again as we look at McBride getting the lead. Holding. Fouled out of play. I'll say one thing in this series. We eyes the last time. We focused in on a lot of different parts of the anatomy, anatomy in the first three ball games. <laughs> if you're like me, I'm looking right at that inset. There's one look, there's the runner, and there's the second look. A third look. Second strikeout for Gale. That ball is a good spot, Tom. He finally got one in a good spot, Tony. He's been getting behind, and he's thrown just into the third inning here. He's thrown about, he's thrown 47 pitches now, and of those 47 pitches, 37 of them have been fastballs. And if you don't think that those hitters on that bench aren't sitting on fastballs, they know exactly what that pitcher's doing out there. And he's lucky he got that in a good spot. He got away with a pitch at the third out last inning where Schmidt threw a fastball right down the middle and Schmidt popped it up to center field. Here's Maddox, a first ball fastball hitter. Let's see what happens. He hits the ball to right field pretty well. You could see a play on. High bouncing ball. Brett backs up second. That's all he'll get. Force play. Maddox is on with two outs, brings up Trio with Bo on deck. You know, I can't help as I look at Brett. He played with a broken thumb, bad shoulder. What tremendous pain he must have been in to take himself out. He had a, a badly bruised heel earlier, and then he had some strained ligaments in his ankle, and he came back too soon. He's really a throwback. Uh, referred to as a hard nosed player. So I'm telling you you really have to admire him and even hurting that badly he had two base hits in the walk. He get out of his sick bed and hit a line drive. Which he did tonight home run. They call it minor surgery but no play. But to me there's no such animal as minor surgery. It's like the guy said minor surgeries went on the other guy. That go whoa he faked me he really had a good jump but he stopped and it's a strike he took four quick steps he was really spinning watch him I he think definitely they got to try here they have to try to make a steal Tony two outs trio off they throw him out trio leads off next inning I think they got to try and both run. managers have had a chance in this game if they wanted to start a runner they chose not to holding line drive right field line it is a fair ball hurdle charging Maddox is digging hard they'll hold him at third it's a double for Manny Trio nice play by hurdle that ball if it gets by him look out you bet and that's one of the advantages of knowing your home ballpark you talked earlier about the two guys Lonnie Smith Lazinski and that going in the left and right field corners 
to play those walls and those caroms. Hurdle played it perfectly, didn't he? Didn't waste one split second getting it back in. So it's second and third, two outs, first base is open. Boa is the hitter. Boone is the on deck man. We're tied at one apiece. Tom, this could be a situation where you would pitch around him. I mean, widen your, your zone. I don't think I would here, uh, Joe. Not as hot as Booney's think, been. Not as hot as Booney has been. And Booney, a dead fastball hitter, and Gale sometimes with control problems. I definitely have to go after Larry Bow and try and get him out. Ball one. Brett has come in closer at third in the event of a bunt, even with two outs, and Aikens has sneaked in at first base. Look how close Brett is, and then he began creeping in even more. Bo is a good butter. Willie Wilson, just barely out of your shot there, shows how close he is to the line. Good shot of the defense. It's ball two. Two balls and no strikes. If he lays a fast ball in there now, Bo is going to go to work on it. Bo, a line drive type hitter. Ball three. Starting to lay off that high pitch now, that fastball that they were swinging at early in the ball game. Tom, I got a feeling if I was catching you in that situation and you would have told me what you said, we'd have had an argument on the mound. <laughs> I'm the last one to let the ball go. I think I'd have won the argument, too. Uh, <laughs> but we'd have had to have the manager come in. I'd have said, this guy wants to throw that. There's the strike. See what you got to understand up here, Tom, is he's the crew chief up here, <laughs> and you're going to lose the argument. No, he's the no. manager up here. <laughs> Three balls, one strike. Two outs. Foul ball. Brett near the stands, can't get it. He tried to climb into the stands. How do you like that? That's George. And he said he learned this kind of this style of baseball from Hal McCray. He said, I did not know how to play the game until McCray came over and showed me how to take out runners and dive for balls and slide hard. Look at Brett go. He might have had it if not for the temporary seats for those still cameras. You know, Joe, uh, Tony, the, you, the philosophy of baseball you're talking about, George Brett, he learned it from Hal McCray, and you know who Hal McCray's teammate was when Hal was at Cincinnati. Of Pete course, Rose. the other guy in the other dugout who plays the same kind of baseball as George Brett, Pete Rose. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Brett. In time. So, Philadelphia goes down in the top of the third. We go to the bottom half of the third inning with the score. The Philadelphia Phillies won. Kansas City Royals won. And do up for Kansas City, it'll be UL Washington, Willie Wilson, and Frank White. Introducing an American car designed for a changing world and with a commitment to quality. Introducing the beautifully new Ford Granada, built with a new design, smaller in size, yet more spacious than ever before. Built with Granada's highest mileage ratings ever. And built with Ford's quality control system. 38 different inspectors examine every single car. The new Granada. Built for a changing world from Ford. Oh, we should have baths like this back home. Mm -hmm. Our money. What? It's out in my suit. Oh. Do you carry traveler's checks? <laughs> yes, Citicorp. Well, refunds are no problem almost anywhere in the world. Oh, there's even a large city bank right near the Imperial Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Uh, Yama. Uh, Mr. Yama, my wife, Ellen. <laughs> That's all right. Don't get up. <laughs> Travel the world with us, Citicorp Traveler's Checks. What's going on? Lunch. Burgers, huh? Nah, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Coach says the Colonel only uses fresh quality chicken. Coach wants us to eat right. He says Kentucky Fried Chicken's a great meal at a sensible price. Smart coach. Smart enough to know what my boys like best. Right on, Hank. It's so nice. So good about a meal. So good about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Royal 
Bills fans here in Kansas City. We'll show you head on what Brett looked like when he tried to go into the seats for Larry Bowe's pop-up in foul territory. Bowe then rounded out. UL Washington to lead it off. We're all tied, one apiece. Washington, one for eight, a 125 average. Ball one. We're tied. Phillies one, Kansas City one. Bottom of the third. Two balls, no strikes. Strike. Two balls and a strike. Two balls, one strike. Three and one. They really play UL Washington very shallow and over toward the left field line. Let's see, look at the defense. Big hole. That's Gary Maddox way left center. Big hole and well, kind of right center, but especially look at the right field line. Strike. Three and two, full count now. <laughs> Had him played perfectly. One out. You talk about scouting reports. There was a pretty good one right there. Hit the ball hard. Tony pointed out where Maddox was playing, and here it comes. So there's one out, and here is Willie Wilson. He bounced out his first time up. Well, Washington kind of talking to himself, going back to the bench, as you saw. There's a strike. Maddox playing him in the same spot. Ball ball. I think Maddox is interesting the way he plays center field because as you look at him now, he said, how many kids dream and have a hero in baseball and get a chance to play and learn from him? He played, of course, with the Giants, Willie Mays from whom he learned all about center field and how to play shallow by watching and listening. Two strike pitch. High. I tell you when you describe Willie Mays one of the best descriptions. Willie Mays his glove where triples go to die. Curveball inside. Two balls, two strikes, one out. 1-1, one, one, bottom of the third. He didn't get it, a breaking ball. Willie Wilson is out on strikes. That's the first strikeout for Ruthman. It looks like the Philly staff has been trying to throw hard stuff in on Willie Wilson when they get ahead, push him back off the plate and come back with a breaking ball. That's the second breaking ball inside that Ruthven threw to Wilson on another strikeout. Ruthven in 1980 averaged 3.5 strikeouts per nine innings, three walks per nine innings. As he faces Frank White, who bounced out third to first his first time up, strike one. There is Frank's wife, Gladys White. <laughs> the little 
guy was really munching. Mike Schmidt has it. In time. So it's three up and three down for the Kansas City Royals. And as we complete three innings of play here, the score, we are tied. Philadelphia won and Kansas City won. And two up for the Phillies in the fourth. It will be Bob Boone, Lonnie Smith, and Pete Rose. Up here in this country, winter isn't a season, it's a warning. Telling you it's time to move down from the cold, down to a valley the wind can't reach. Down toward home in a place called Miller Time. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, one beer stands clear. Using the surgical fiber optic lens, Prestone Labs is going to show you what weak, neglected antifreeze can do to your radiator after only 9,000 miles. Look at these passages. Rust, corrosion, continued neglect could clog them and overheat this radiator. But look at a Prestone protected radiator after the same 9,000 miles. Quite a difference. Prestone has a patented silicone silicate formula to lock out rust and corrosion. Prestone 2 and Prestone Super Flush. No wonder we're number one. They killed his wife, they killed his child, and now he rides for revenge. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw Josie Wales Sunday. Babu, the schedule hitter for the Phillies. This 1-1 one -one ball game, Bob's father played in the World Series in 48. We asked him how his dad feels about this. Well, I know it's something that he always wanted to play in a World Series. I know he's very excited and happy for me that, I, that I've had the opportunity to play in a World Series. We didn't verbalize it uh, in our conversation, but I could tell that he was very excited that, that I did have the opportunity to play in a World Series. Bob Boone talking about his dad, Ray Boone. And I think his father's back in Philadelphia babysitting with mom. Yeah, Boy, could he hit? Was he an RBI man? Good Ooh, man. Tough. I saw them both at, in Philadelphia. Wife Sue is here. Bob Boone's wife is here. What a great gal she is. There's the strike. The reason she's here is to watch the game, but she's also <laughs> a television star. They had a tug of war between the Phillies wives and the Kansas City wives. Fastball is inside. And I tell, tell you, it was quite a battle. You'll see it next Thursday night on Games People Play. And all of the husbands were out here rooting them on. Came out early. Larry Boa had quite a line about that. Ball gets by, although it's called a strike. One ball, two strikes. Boa watching him in the tug of war. Holler to the wise, listen, this is like a doubleheader. You lose the first one, we'll win the second one. Was realizing what was most important. It's good. Next Thursday night, you'll see it. I'm not going to tell you who won. I know. But you'll have to watch it. You better know. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Bob Boone. Didn't mean to swing. Little excuse me. Coming down hard. Otis, he's there. He doesn't get enough credit for the fine center fielder he's been down through the years for Kansas City. He's got a good arm, good speed. He plays deeper than Gary Maddox. He doesn't have quite the confidence going back on the ball, but you can see the range he's got coming in, so he doesn't fear that looper falling in. Amos Sotis. One man out. Here is Lonnie Smith. He's single to open the ball game, and he hit the ball that drove in Manny Trio. Balls it back, strike one. He hit it back to Gale. Gale decided to go to first, got Smith, but Trio scored. A one run for Kansas City, a home run by George Brett, his first time up. Philadelphia's had opportunities. Through the first three innings, they have stranded seven base runners. They've had chances, like Kansas City didn't gain two. One ball and one strike. A 
what a sight. Royal Stadium, part of the Harry S. Truman Sports Complex. Two balls and a strike. Right center field, Amos Otis is going back. He has room. He's got it. He had him played perfectly. He was there in right center field. He didn't expect him to pull, and he didn't. Two outs, nobody on. Brings up Pete Rose. The first baseman, Pete Rose. Young Petey Rose. Did you talk to me before the ball game? I said, hey, how's it feel to have your dad in another world series? You know what he said? Wow. You win the MVP again. <laughs> Got about as much confidence as dad, doesn't he? Frank White over to first. Three up, three down. Easy inning for Rich Gale and the Kansas City Royals. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. The score here is Philadelphia one, the Royals one. And two up for the Kansas City Royals. It'll be George Brett, Willie Mays Akins, and Hal McRae. We'll be back after these messages. I learned to drive in an old Model T that belonged to my dad. We counted on Pennzoil to take care of the engine. Today, Pennzoil does even more. Because now, it saves gasoline. Pennzoil has added gas savings to its regular multi-weight oils. And they've done it at their regular price. So you don't have to spend extra money to get extra miles. Gas-saving Pennzoil. Quality in every extra mile. Hey, you sold out of Gillette Track 2. <laughs> Delivery's coming any second. But why should a busy man like you have to wait when this razor will do? Gillette Track 2 shaves me closer and smoother than that. I'll wait. These will fit your Track 2 handle. I know what I'm getting with Track 2 twin blades, but those, I'll wait. But, but to guys who use Gillette Track 2, no other blade will do. Ah. Track, track 2? two? Ah. We'll, we'll wait. wait. Gillette, when it comes to shaving, we give you the edge. Now, here's something they can't say. Who's they? They is them, the people who don't make Polaroids one step. Oh, them. What can't they say? Well, they can't say they have a one step of the world's fastest developing color film. They don't have a one step. They don't have Time Zero Super Color either. You see your pictures in seconds, not minutes. And look at that color. Beautiful. But why can't they put our film in their camera? It only fits ours. It's too bad. Yeah. Time Zero. From the Goodyear Blimp America, pilot Captain John Moran, there you see it, over Royal Stadium. Impressive sight as George Brett steps into the batter's box. He had the home run in the first to give him a lead. Phillies tied it with a run in the second. George Brett. Four hits in his last ball out of play he has four hits in a row after that home run in the first the record is six Goose Gosland in 1924 Thurman Munson in 1976 Brett has four in a row this man is at seven home runs in 20 postseason games that is impressive One strike. Jim Fry can't say enough about him as manager. He said he could get good wood on an aspirin. There is Jim Fry's wife, Joan Fry. It's popped up. It is playable. Mike Schmidt calling for it. One out. Foul territory. Stayed inside on that time, didn't they, Tom? Ball jam them a little bit, you think? I believe they're trying to stay inside on Brett. I think. Ruben the first time up got the ball down and in, which was a mistake. I think the first time he, when he hit the home run, it was a mistake. I think they're trying to pump him hard stuff up and in. Akins, here he goes with that foul line once again. It has been completely rubbed out. I don't know how they can tell. We saw Bill Kunkel pull out the 
tape measure. Fouled out of play, strike one. One one to score. He is really deep in that box. That's what happened in the earlier games. And there's Kunkel with the tape measure. Left field. This is going to be a tough play. Cannot get it. Willie Mays Aiken will really be digging as Smith dives, misses it. Aikens is digging for third. Head first slide triple. Was really lumbering on this play. Pitch from Ruth in about middle of the plate. He hit it the opposite way. He isn't getting around on their fastball. He tries for the backhanded catch. All the way to the wall. Here it is again. For a lot of guys, that would have been inside the park corner. In fact, most. But he's got that bad knee after the surgery. He just couldn't make it. So here is Hal McRae with Amos Otis on deck. in the first game he has 12 total bases four base hits some kind of production strike Ruthven trailing by a run two to one Kansas City has just taken the lead with one out here in the bottom of the fourth home quotas checking with McKenzie McCray at first held by Rose the outfielder playing Otis to right center he's been hitting the ball to right center a lot more this year the gap in left center field Maddox shallow once again toward right center but McBride right on down toward the line he's got a big hole between trio and Rose to shoot through Boone and Ruthman having trouble getting together One ball, two strikes, one out. You know, Tony, one thing I'm surprised about in this game is that the two teams with pretty good speed have not done more running than they've done. They sat over there, they sat on first base, they've had opportunities, situations to utilize their speed. Both teams seem to be a little conservative. Both managers seem to pull back and are a little on the conservative side. Dallas Green, who talks like if the Phillies win it all, he will not be back as a field manager. Two balls and two strikes. He just simply says, I do not choose to be a professional field manager. 
He did say if they make a few deals that he likes and the team strengthens in certain area, he could be back. He was head of their player personnel department, bringing kids to the minor leagues. That grazed it first. Otis, two balls, two strikes. 2-1, Kansas City leading. No pitch. Time was called by the... Well, it was the second base up by the home plate umpire, but both hands went up. There's Jimmy Fry. We got a little cat and mouse game going on between Amos Otis and Dick Ruther now. They're playing a little bit of one-upmanship. I'm not in any hurry to get in the box. And Ruther saying, if you're not in any hurry to get in the box, I'm not in any hurry to throw. And then Otis will step out. There goes the runner. High chopper. Trio's only play will be to first base. It is in time. He had the right man covering and had the right thought, Otis did. He had Trio covering, but Ruthven made the good pitch. Might have been a sinker ball down and in that Otis could not get to right field. He made a good pitch on this time. Good pitch. He drove it right in the ground. One of the things that still amazes me when you look at Manny Trio's arm. Look at that arm. Watch Otis go after this pitch. Well, I guess it was away. It wasn't down and in, but it sunk. May have taken something off it. But he did do a job by starting the runner. Prevented a double play. Here is Clint Hurdle. He didn't know a force play his first time up. It's a strike. <laughs> Janet Marie Hurdle rooting him on. Pulls it. Trio. Kind of a tricky hop, but in time. That ends the inning, but a triple by Aikens, a single by McRae, and as we complete four innings of play, it is now Kansas City two and uh, Philadelphia Phillies one. And coming up in the fifth inning, it'll be Mike Schmidt, Mike McBride, and Keith Moreland. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. On Chips, Ponch and John help a young Indian boy protect wildlife from deadly poachers and learn his heritage. Oh. We're friendly. A special family episode Sunday. Of California's 422 different banks and savings and loans, none pays higher interest on 26-week $10,000 treasury certificates than Wells Fargo. What's more, no savings and loan or bank can match Wells Fargo's reward for serious savers. Highest rate on treasury certificates, first rate service. Wells Fargo Bank comes through with both. Save the clown! Save, Save the, the clown! Hey, wait Save a minute! Bring back Jack! Hey, wait a minute! Jack in the Box has got something better than a clown. Better? Yeah, our new Chicken Supreme. Juicy white meat chicken, lightly breaded and seasoned, two kinds of melted cheese, fresh tomato and leaf lettuce on a toasted whole wheat bun. You know, Jack in the Box has changed. This Chicken Supreme is delicious. And what about the clown? Saturday at 7 is Big City Comedy with guest Fred Willard. Joe Gargiola, Tom Seaver, and Tony Kubek back at Royal Stadium with a very picturesque shot. We're in Kansas City for game number three, the 1980 World Series. The Phillies have won the first two. Now it'll be Rich Gale. Pitching to Schmidt, McBride, and Moreland. For the Royals, two runs on four hits and no errors. The Phillies thus far, one run, five hits and no errors. Schmidt walked in the first, and then with the bases loaded in the second, he flied high to left center field. One of those just missed pitch. Rich Gale has settled down. He retired retired four in a row, three up, three down in the fourth, one strike. Last inning was, was his best inning, Tony. He's thrown 66, now 67 pitches. Last inning, retired three in a row, just threw eight pitches. One strike to count to Schmidt. Breaking pitch, misses outside, one and one. Gale has had some shoulder problems, not uncommon among pitchers, but he had a hot streak during the course of the year. Won 11 straight games this season. This is inside. Looked like a breaking ball. Two balls and one strike with nobody out. Royals two, Phillies one. We're at the top of the fifth. You know, for a pitcher like Gale, he started out 0-5. Tony ended up 
13 and 9. That was 11 decisions he reeled off in the middle of the summer. He pitched awfully well for these Royals. Drill deep. The left field. It is high in the air toward the bullpen. Willie Wilson. It is tied up at two. Mike Schmidt. It's a home run very high into the bullpen for the Phillies in left field. Seems like these Phillies really can't get going until they get behind. George Brett home run in the first inning gave the Royals a lead. The Phillies came back top of the second. Well they were behind in every game in the league championship series against Houston and they won three. Schmidt just missed a home run the last time I bet on almost exactly the same kind of pitch. Willie Wilson goes all the way back to the wall but no no luck on this one Willie. Fastball and it's even two and two. Willie looks like a little kid outside the schoolyard. Nate McBride one for two in the ball game. With one strike and the score tied at two here in the fifth. Slider foul back. Gale way ahead. 0 and 2. Jimmy Fry, who coached under Earl Weaver, Baltimore Orioles. He's had a few guys going to the manager's job. Billy Hunter, George Bamberger, Frank Robinson had a managerial job. May get another, should get another. There he is, Mike Schmidt, hit the home run to tie it at two here in the fifth for the Phillies. 0 and 2. Moves him back. One ball, two strikes. Tom, I've heard this. I don't know if it's true or not. They say that to get a young pitcher to throw inside and move guys off the plate is one of the hardest things to teach. If it's not a natural instinct, if a pitcher is not naturally aggressive and won't do it, it's a very difficult thing to, to teach. There's a good example of what you can do when you throw inside. Gale came inside to McBride on the pitch before that went away, and McBride couldn't get to it. That thought lingers in a hitter's mind when you do go back inside. So it's strikeout number three for Rich Gale, and it'll bring up Keith Marlin, who's flied out and struck out. Score tied at two in the fifth. Breaking ball misses one and all. Peter Brewer report to the accommodation please. It's not a new experience for Marlin. He DH'd in the minor leagues. Base set left field. So on a one ball no strike pitch Moreland's on with one out. The center fielder Gary Maddox. There you see Cindy Moreland. Man just got a base hit but she's used to it. Out comes Jimmy Fry now to have a word with his pitcher Rich Gale Porter and Brett will join. In the conference. We've got a two to two ball game here in the top of the fifth with one out. Marlins at first base. He does not have good speed and Maddox is the hitter. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball. As Gale leaves. Reddy Martin appears to be the pitcher coming in. And well, while there's a break in the action, we'll finish that disclaimer later. We're going to leave you here in the fifth with a score tied at two here in Kansas City in game number three. Come on now. Are you going to spend this weekend hibernating again? But it's cold out there. That's no reason to let your fine, firm body go soft. We're AMF. We make what it takes to keep you in shape indoors. Voight Racquetball. Whitely Bruce Jenner exercise equipment and AMF bowling equipment. Remember, you won't get a cup for hibernating. All you'll get is a pot. Go eat. Quiet me, comfort me. The day's been long, so quiet me, LTD. And let me drive my cares away, far away, to where I want to be. Now I see suddenly. Peace, quiet, comfort. Discover a world called LTD. Quiet me, LTD. Americans are deeply concerned over the economic failures of the last four years. When I became governor of California, we solved many of the same problems America faces today by bringing in a team of elected officials and private citizens. 
Working together, we cut the rate of government spending and turned a $194 million deficit into a $554 million surplus. We did it once, we can do it again. The time is now for Reagan. Reagan for president. They killed his wife, they killed his child, and now he rides for revenge. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw Josie Wales Sunday. For those of you who may have joined us late, we're in Kansas City at Royal Stadium midway through the fifth inning of game three of the World Series. We've got a 2-2 ball game. Royal scored in a home run by Brett, a triple by Akins, and a single off the bat of Hal McRae. Phillies have earned their two runs on two mistakes by Rich Gale, one metal, one physical. The physical was a fastball out over the plate that Mike Schmidt drove for a home run. The mental was a bases loaded situation, one out, one hopper back to Gale. He went to first base, the run scored. So we're set at two, and Jim Fry has decided he's seen enough of Rich Gale. Rennie Martin is the new pitcher. Tony? All right, thank you, Bryant. Rennie Martin and Tom, he was in one other uh, ball game in this championship series. Run him down for him. In relief of the first game, Tony, he pitched four innings, gave up five hits, and struck out one and walked one. During the season, he was 10 and 10 for the Royals with a 4.39 ERA. Well, with one out and Moreland at first, he'll face Gary Maddox, who's grounded out twice in this ball game. He has an excellent curveball when he can control it. His fastball can be spotty if he gets the curveball over the plate. That fastball looks a lot better. They can't sit on it. One ball, no strikes, one out. Score tied at two or the top of the fifth. Moreland, and I guess you should never use an absolute, not much of a stolen base that does not run well. But let's see what happens. Ground ball, tough play by Brett. UL Washington flips, not in time. The Phillies have runners on first and second with one out, and it'll be Manny Trio who is two for two in the ball game. He covers a lot of ground. Moreland able to get a pretty good jump. See UL threw off balance, really couldn't get a whole lot on that throw, and so it's a safe and second, a base hit for Maddox and. Martin is a little deeper in the hole. And Joe, I'm not saying that Brett might have had a shot at that ball, but playing as shallow as he has been with his problem, uh, he said he would have gotten two balls back in game number two. He might have had a shot at that at normal depth. Now it's Trio. One run home, a Schmidt home run, ground ball, one hop. White to UL Washington. They get Trio at first base. Double play helps out Reddy Martin and the Royals. But the Phillies on. Mike Schmidt's home run leading off this inning have tied the ball game at two apiece. And coming to the plate in the bottom of the fifth for Kansas City will be that man, Daryl Porter, nine hitter UL Washington, leadoff man Willie Wilson. If you're shopping for a new car, it's smart to talk to an Allstate agent before you buy. Before I buy? Why? Some cars get a break on insurance at Allstate. Oh, we'll be right back. Let's face it, all cars aren't built the same. At all states, some cost less to insure. Buy one of these and we'll pass the savings on to you. Up to 35% less and comprehensive. 35%? Uh, we'll be right back. Different rates for different cars. You're in good hands with Allstate. That's a promise for me, Judy Davis. RCA wants you to see the right color. Does your television automatically capture all these subtle shades of red on this fiery desert of color? Color Track 1981 can. With RCA's exclusive detail processor, Color Track separates detail from color, refines it, then locks the right color on track. Even colors only subtle shades apart. Color Track 1981. RCA is making television better and better. You're the Pepsi generation, the spirit of today. And with every taste of life that's new, well, that Pepsi spirit shines right through. It's that Pepsi spirit. Drink it in, drink it in, drink it in. It's that Pepsi spirit. Drink it in, drink it in, drink it in. Right now, we're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Aretha Franklin in concert tonight after Family Feud on KNBC Los Angeles. Back here in Royal Stadium with Kansas City coming to bat. The beautiful Harry S. Truman Sports Complex. Kansas City Chiefs play right outside that fence. 
A beautiful ballpark, Ruthven, in a two-to-two ball game, facing Porter, Washington, and Wilson. Too high, one ball. Porter, grounded out to short, unassisted. His only other time up. Chopper off the end of the bat. Good sinker by Ruthven. One and no count, they get Porter. Well, we're going to start it all over again and get through it. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Two to two. Bottom of the fifth. One out. UL Washington. He lined the left center field. Maddox positioning him perfectly. Too high for a ball. Kansas City scored first in this ball game. One in the first inning, the first time at bat for George Brett in this ball game. He had a home run. One and one. Kansas City scored another run in the fourth inning on a triple by Akins. McCray with a single to right center field. Philadelphia, as we look at the on deck man, Willie Wilson. Philadelphia with a run in the second. Mike Schmidt tied it in the fifth with a home run. Two balls and one strike to UL Washington. Tony, they just announced the crowd, press box here, 42,380. And the stadium facts in the book say that the seating capacity is 40,628. They got a few shoehorns working tonight. Uh -huh. Two and one, right center field. Maddox with that great speed. He just outruns the ball. The last time that Washington batted, you remember, he lined one to left center field. This time he pulled it into right center field. But that speed by Maddox able to get over there and plug the gap. Good play. Maddox has an interesting theory. He plays so shallow because he has confidence going back as Wilson steps in. But he also says because he can see the catcher signs, not the numbers, but where he places his hand, whether he wants the ball inside or outside. And if the pitcher positions the ball correctly, he gets a better jump. Two outs. Wilson slices it down the left field line foul. Boy. Willie has struck out six times in this championship series. Grounded out. First time that he struck out in the third. Do I envy Gary Maddox if he can see the catcher move his hands from center field? That's some well, pair of eyes. But you know, when Booney gives a sign, and we'll see it, and then he gives the position he wants the pitch in. Watch. No, he didn't do it that way, did he? No, he did another one. He didn't do it. Sometimes they slap the inner or the outer thigh for location. One and one. What do you use, Tom? We use number signs, but a the catcher normally will flash inside or outside, and the center fielder can see that. Some guys see which way the catcher wants the ball on the left side of the plate or the right side of the plate, and that certainly will help the outfield. One and one to Wilson. Pull the string, he's got him. One ball, two strikes. Used to be that an infielder would flash it. There is Kathy Wilson. Kathy, of course, Willie Wilson's wife. Used to be an infielder. If you hit the glove, was one thing. If you saw the glove, was something else, or different things that they did. But better eyesight these days. Seems like they've been ahead, the Philly staff of Wilson, this entire three games. Check swing, chop foul. Marty McKenzie, the third base coach for the Royals. Entire new coaching staff and manager here. Kansas City, Jose Martinez, of course, at first. You've seen him during the course of the first two ball games. Billy Connors, the pitching coach. Jim Schaefer, bullpen coach. Two to two ball game. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Phillies with eight hits. They've stranded eight runners. Wells with just four. He blew it right by him inside once again. They are overpowering Willie Wilson in this series so far. He has struck out seven times. So three up, three down for Ruthman here in game number three of this World Series with the score, the Phillies two and the Royals two. Do up, it'll be Larry Gaw, Babu, Lottie Smith for the Phillies. I'll tell you, I was a born soccer player. Did everything with my feet. Took out the rubbish with my feet, made the bed with my feet, drove my mum crazy. But I finally found something I enjoy doing with my hands, drinking light beer from Miller.
Light has a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling. But what really makes me happy is the taste. It's terrific. Now, my mum should be happy too. Look, mum, no feet. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Instant photography by Kodak and the big audition. The cornucopia. It is a horn of plenty. Hold it. Got the flash, Marvin? Sure. It's still trident. Very good. OK, next. Fine crops of grain and fruit. You're on, Louise. Hi, Alexa. Well, Marvin, what do you think? I think all my pictures are great. The Kodak Colorburst 250, the instant camera with built-in flash and brilliant color by Kodak. Is the Energizer just another battery? Is a voyage to the moon just another trip? The Energizer from EverReady Technology. Of all leading brands, nothing outlasts, nothing outperforms the Energizer. EverReady made sure. Your recorder, toy, radio, they'll tell you, Energize me. The Energizer, Energize for life. Long life. Hi, I'm Ken Schreiner, and I'm leaving General Hospital for a man-sized piece of the action and a lot of romance on Texas, weekdays, on NBC. Larry Bow, the first man up in this game number three of the World Series. Pete Rose, all ready to hit. He'll come up fourth this inning. Should Boa, Boone, or Smith get on base? Ready? Ready, Martin. Boa, one strike. Brett in tight at third. Boa. Aikens in tight at first. Base set up the middle for Larry Baugh. So the Phillies have speed on first base. And Boone coming to the plate. Without even waiting for a sign, I think if he gets by the first pitch, that is if Boone doesn't hit it, I think they'd put a hit and run play on because he just serves this ball. That's a bad pitch to Larry Boa. You got to pitch Boa hard stuff away the way they did the last time up, make him hit the ball on the ground to the other side. Martin threw an off speed pitch, which is the pitch Boa can pull, and they play the outfield around the left field. Boa stole a base in game number one, snap throw over, not in time. That I thought really excited this Phillies ball club. Went four runs down to Leonard. He stole second base surprisingly. Pitch out. Boone had not squared around a bunt. So now, Reddy Martin is one ball, no strikes, no outs. Bowes at first. He is a good base stealer. Porter's He's lost a few steps in the last couple of years, but still is very quick. Porter's in the box right now. He pitched out on the first pitch, and Elia at third base, and Boone really went through a great charade. You saw that close up of Boa. He acted it out perfectly. One ball, no strikes. Bowes off. Fly ball, left center field. Ball picks it up. He won't be decoyed. Amos Otis has got it in left center field. One out. I don't know what you call it, but in a spot like that, as soon as he got on, the first thing that triggered in my mind, second pitch. If it's well, let's two balls in one strike, play. managers go, and then from the sixth inning on, the favorite spot becomes a second pitch. Now it's Lonnie Smith, so you've got speed at the plate in Lonnie Smith and speed on the bases in Boa in this two to two ball game. Boa during the regular season had 21 steals, was caught six times. Smith is single, grounded out, but he drove home a run, an RBI, and flied to center. Hit the ball pretty hard to right center field that Amos Otis balled in near the warning track. Curveball missed outside, one ball. Ruddy Martin, he relieved Rich Gale in the fourth. That same situation as you had with Boone. One ball, no strikes, except for there's one out now. So Bullock could be going again. He's not. Inside, he jammed him, but he fought it off. He's got a base hit to center field. Boa had thoughts of trying it. But then when he saw Amos Otis charging the ball very hard, he came back quickly. So two men on for the Phillies. One thing the Phillies are noted for is running the bases very aggressively even though they have not run stealing wise as much in this series as I would have expected but there you see a very aggressive turn by Larry Boa Amos Otis in center field put that ball right back into second base keeping Boa from going to third Billy Connors out once again to talk to his pitcher this time Rennie Martin 
So they're going to go over with Rennie Martin, a fairly young pitcher. How they're going to work on Pete Rose with one out, two men on. Two to two the score. We're in the top of the sixth. Marty Patton, a right-hander. Jeff Twitty, a left-hander. One thing that Martin had trouble with, Joe, in the first game that he believed over in Philadelphia as being a curveball pitcher was not being able to establish his curveball that he could throw it for strikes. That's Billy Connors, the Royals pitching coach. And again here tonight, he's not been able to establish that he can get his curveball over. And hitters, if they can sit on one pitch, if they can sit on your fastball, they're going to hurt you. Mike Schmidt on deck. Petey Rose outside the on-deck circle. His dad is hitting. Struck out, walked, and grounded out. Two men on, one out. One strike. Pete Rose has seen 11 pitches so far tonight, and they've all been fastballs. Has not seen anything off speed, any breaking ball, any changeups. And the majority of those fastballs that Pete have seen have been inside. Rose still looking for his World Series first hit. This World Series, anyway, he blew it by. Two strikes to Rose. That's Bo at the bottom of your screen at second base. He led the sitting off with a single, then Boone flied out. Smith single to center field, so they've got great speed on the bases. He threw it high as the Rose goes down for the second time in this ball game. Rennie Martin, who is not considered an overpowering pitcher, that was the Jugs gone down below had it, that fastball at 88 miles an hour. It is relative because with Rennie Martin's curveball, if he's getting it over as he has, a couple of times that fastball looks that much more overpowering. Rose was late. Two outs, two to two ball game. Top of the sixth. Ruddy Martin with a tough man to get out once again. He homered his last time up to tie the ball game at two. Mike Schmidt walked in the first and just missed the pitch in the second. Good curveball. One strike. His curveball breaks more down than on a flat plane, so it is almost equally effective against right or left-handed hitters. There are your base runners. Bo at second, Lonnie Smith at first. And with Porter out there making sure they are together, I'm sure that between innings when they sit there, the Kansas City Royals do, they know the importance of this game. Amos Soda said it takes four nails to put that lid on the coffin. They only have two. Lose this ball game, and the fact that no team has ever come back from having lost three, That'll be in their minds, and I'll guarantee you that they're thinking about the importance of this one right here. One strike to Mike Schmidt. Two men on base for the Phillies with two outs in a tie ball game. He overthrew a fastball, almost got over the head of Porter. One and one. Well, Schmidt made the comment that he would hit some balls hard in this championship series. He's hit two pretty well so far today. One for a home run, one for an out. Hit that triple in Philadelphia to right center field off Quisenberry. One ball, two strikes. He is throwing fairly hard. One ball, two strikes, two out. Dallas, Dallas Green. Green. Dallas Green in the Philly dugout. That Jugs gun behind home plate had that fastball 89 miles an hour, which is not considered overpowering now. But when you match it with his curveball, with a curveball, got over he, the first pitch to exactly Schmidt. Right. Here's a may look pitch. a lot faster than the guy who throws 95 consistently. One and two with two outs. Schmidt against Martin. Curveball. He just missed outside. You can see Porter move outside on that pitch. He wanted Martin to drop that curveball on the outside corner. He moved out extremely early. You see Porter going outside. He wants a curveball away from Schmidt. Doesn't want to give him the to jerk, be able to pull down the line. Porter can't believe it's not a strike. That was a pitcher's pitch right there that at times you will get. Jim Fry, the Kansas City manager. Ready Martin in trouble. Phillies have stranded eight base runners through the first five innings. Two and two pitch, ground ball. UL Washington, it is close. But he just got Lonnie Smith with that great speed on the flip to White. So now the Phillies have stranded 10 base runners through six innings. The score here in Royal Stadium, Kansas City. Phillies to Royals to leave the UL. This will show you the great speed of Lonnie Smith. They barely got Smith. Second base umpire Dutch Renner with his nose right on the bag. So it's all tied up at two. Two up for the Royals. Number two hitter Frank White. 
and George Brett, Willie Mays Inc. Mustang! The sky's the limit for 1981. Now Mustangs available with a rakish new T-roof. Mustang, born to run with the wind, sure-footed to handle quick turns. Mustang, a world of high gas mileage you might not expect from such a high-spirited car. Mustang! Capture a Mustang, America's most popular sports car. From the world of better ideas at Ford. Where in the world are we? Now, what's this new place? Welcome to the last place on Earth. Look at all this. Oh, uh, dear. Like my boutique. Cute. Yeah, we just have traveler's checks. City Corp? Yes. <gasps> Love them. Imagine City Corp traveler's checks are even accepted in the last place on Earth. Our lucky day. Travel the world with us. City Corp traveler's checks. Reunite on ice? That's nice. Reunite on ice? That's nice. We need your nice. Rio Niti is America's best loved imported wine. Red, white, and rose. Like love, it's pure and natural. We need on ice? That's nice. After the first batter. Kansas City, game number three. Phillies have a two-game to nothing lead over the Royals. The fans are starting to hoot a little bit here in Kansas City as we've got a tie ball game in the bottom of the sixth. It'll be Frank White. He's grounded out to third base twice. Dick Ruthven. Fouled out of play, one strike. White, 0 for 2 tonight. At one time, they never thought he would hit at all. But he has worked very hard. Charlie Lau has worked with him a lot. Always been outstanding defensively. One strike pitch to Frank. Too high, one and one. In fact, Frank White grew up within a block of the old Kansas City Stadium. Went to a tryout camp with about 600 other kids over a two-day period. Then was sent to Mr. Ewing Kaufman's Baseball Academy. He was the first graduate. There have been more. UL Washington, Rodney Scott at Montreal, about 10 or 11 have made the major leagues. Popped up out of play. One ball, two strikes. To Frank White. Dick Ruthven from our center field camera. Doing a little rubbing up of the ball. You might have heard the controversy. Tom, you can tell us about it. In game number two with Carlton and the slippery ball. Carlton had a... A lot of trouble with the slickness on the balls. Evidently, they were not rubbed up correctly. Didn't have the right kind of mud to run, rub them up. Strike out for Dick goes down. Well, let's go down right now with a pretty good friend and manager, Whitey Herzog, with our colleague, the Merle Harmon. Thank you, Tony. Whitey, of course, managed the Royals. He managed the Cardinals this year, became general manager. Whitey, I asked you earlier if you would go back to the field and manage. We talked about if you got the right guy. We have confirmation you have the right guy, Joe McDonald from the Mets. Does that mean you're going to be general manager or manager? Well, actually, Joe and I are very good friends. We worked together a long time with the Mets. Uh, I'm going to make an announcement next Friday. I'm not going to tell you, Merle, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to let the World Series get over and let the Cardinals have have some headlines. But you say you're not going to say, though, that you're not going back, right? I'm not saying anything. Okay. Deep to right center field by George Brett, but he got under it. Maddox will go to the warning track, almost pushed to the wall. Well, they get Brett. He is homered, fouled out, and just missed, as Schmidt did earlier. Gary Maddox hauling it in. Well, heard a rumor, may not be a rumor around the batting cage today, that Joe McDonald has already signed a three-year contract. We'll do the paperwork for Whitey Herzog, and Herzog will manage on the field. I think the only thing that may be in uh, limbo is how long McDonald has signed for. But uh, McDonald, the general manager, and Whitey will be back as the manager of the Cardinals. George Brett. Now it's Willie Mays Akins who grounded out hit a triple and scored. In fact, that triple in the fourth was the first triple in Willie Aiken's career, major league career. He was then driven home by McCray in the fourth. 
There they go again with uh -huh. that back foot. It's a very tough rule to enforce. We've been talking to all the umpires. Uh, Bill Kunkel, Ron Luciano off the thing. We've been talking to him about it. I don't know why they can't enforce it. Two outs. He can't see it. That's why he can see it before the pitch is on the way. And Ronnie, you tell us. Well, the thing is, you just can't see it. Why? The reason you can't see it is because you're watching the ball come into the play. Now, how can he look down right there? How could he take his eyes off of the pitch and look at the back foot? You'd never see the pitch come in. The so, catcher would say, where's the pitch? And you'd say, well, I didn't see the pitch, but his foot was in the box. One ball, one strike to Aikens with two outs. And the score tied at two in the bottom of the sixth. Well, let's watch it. Pryor, focusing on the pitcher, popped up out of play. Ron, let me ask you, have you ever seen it called? Did you ever call it? And have you ever seen it called? Yes, but never the back foot. I can call it when he steps his front foot out of the box because then he comes in your line of vision. And then you're looking at the pitcher, you're watching the plate, you're watching the ball come in, and you can see that front foot go out of the box. That's been called. Hank Aaron got a home run taken away from him because his front foot was out of the box. But there's no way you can see that back foot if he moves it while the pitcher right now, if he moves it back, no one can tell. Him. Count goes two balls, two strikes, and there are two outs here in Kansas City. We're in the last of the six with a score tied at two. Phillies with ten hits, Royals with four. Kansas City through five have left two men on base, but like the Royals did in game number two in Philadelphia when they stranded 11, through six innings, Philadelphia has already left ten men on base. Two and two. He got it by him inside, but he fouls it out of play. Bob Boone, you know, look at Boone right here. The mask. He does not wear that little underhanging device from the mask I was talking about. He's got an old style mask. The only catcher that wears the old style mask in the big leagues these days. And he says they can't get it riveted on to dangle down. I got to believe he can find some way to drill holes in there and hang that thing down. He really took a shot right between the collarbones and the throat. Two to two. Three and two to Willie Mays Akins. One thing you don't want to do, Tony, is to get to a power hitter and run to a situation where it's three and two, where you give the hitter the edge. We talked about the other night. But this is a situation with two outs. You've got to believe that Willie Mays Akins is going to sit on a fastball. And you've got to think that Rudin is going to throw it because it's his best pitch. He doesn't want to put a runner on base. Rothman has retired seven in a row, three and two pitch. He went breaking ball. And he went away from went it. exactly ball. right. He got. Aikens on a three and two breaking pitch. So we're through six innings in game number three here in Kansas City with a score. Phillies two, Royals two, and two up for the Phillies. It'll be Bake McBride, Keith Marlin, the DH, and Gary Maddox. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. They killed his wife, they killed his child, and now he rides for revenge. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw Josie Wales Sunday. Ralph's $1 million Great Escapes have begun. Fly free for life in the world of Western Airlines or win $25,000 in cash. Win fabulous four-wheel drive Chevy Blazers, Western Airlines vacations in Mexico City, holidays in Hawaii, passports to Knott's Berry Farm, more than 300,000 prizes in all. You can win, too. At Ralph's. Good, Good night. night, son. Good night, Mark. Oh. Let me tell you what I found out. Does it look good? Mm-hmm. I just told the HFC manager how we always thought we'd saved enough for Mark's college, but... What does this mean? Oh, Equity Plus. That's the name of HFC's homeowner loan. Now, over here's our equity, the monthly cost, and the total cost for the loan there. What do you think? Well, let's go tell him he's going to college. When you need a homeowner loan, come to HFC. Put our experience to work. An interview with Henry Kissinger, 6.30 Sunday on News Conference. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kupak and Tom Seaver here in Kansas City. At the end of six, we're all tied at two apiece, and that is from not the blimp. That's from our cameraman, and look where he is. That is in deep center field, two counties away. I don't know how high he is. What a shot he's got. 
Here is Beck McBride. 2 10 and 0. Phillies 2 4 0 Royals. Straight away, center field should be an easy out for Amos Otis. There's one out. A lot of baseball people here in attendance, and I know I ran into George Steinbrenner, Cedric Tallis, and Gene Michaels was in Philadelphia. Bill Burgish, they're looking for a big trade. Haywood Sullivan, I asked him about the manager, and he said, well, we'll probably do it after the World Series. And you heard Whitey Herzog and Merle Harmon. It looks like Whitey will probably be the guy. He'll still be, as far as players are concerned, with Joe McDonald handling the paperwork while Whitey manages, and I guess we'll have a title of general manager, but Joe will do the paperwork and Whitey will do the trading. Here's the pitch. It is high. Ball one to Keith Moreland. Two balls and no strikes, a curveball. Moreland, one for three. There's his strike. Rennie Martin. Royals need this one badly. The Phillies, they say we want it just as bad. Off the end of the bat, two balls and two strikes, breaking ball. Rosin bag. Now Martin rubs it up. That mud that Tom Seaver was talking about, as we look at the Phillies bench, it's not inexpensive. It's a hundred dollars a can. So you talk about inflation, yeah, but it's special about, mud. We're not talking about a big can. You're talking about a coffee can size. Comes from the Delaware River, New Jersey. In the Blackburn. Two balls and two strikes. Straight away center field. Otis is right there. Easy play. One hand grab. So they're two away, and it brings up Gary Maddox. I tell you, when I come to a World Series, and I'm sure I'm no different than most baseball fans, it's just so many thoughts run through your mind. You think about the Royals, they're down by two. I remember Roberto Clemente, the great Clemente, saying when he left Baltimore, we're going to win it when he took him back to Pittsburgh. It's high, ball one. He literally took charge. He said it, and then he let his bat and his glove do the talking. One strike. They'll choose a the most valuable player as they always do. Who will it be? There are a number of people. And Rennie Martin, one ball, one strike. Right field. There it is in right field, and Roberto Clemente would have made a basket catch. And so at the end of the top of the seventh we're tied at 2 2 and a flashback with the great Roberto Clemente and it's a montage you'll love it as always the Pirates leader was Roberto Clemente professionally phenomenal personally peerless a special person who received a special and overwhelming selection to baseball's Hall of Fame. Presenting Ronald McDonald in foul ball. Ronald goes back for the catch and it's caught. But who caught it? Hey, the chicken. Nice catch. Well, can I have my ball back? Looks like Ronald will have to get it himself. Chicken! Chicken! Boo! Chicken, we can both have a ball. Come on, because everyone has a ball at McDonald's. I like to relax when I'm traveling from one series to another. I like a pinch of skull between my cheek and gum, too. That's full tobacco pleasure without lighting up. So I can think about yesterday and tomorrow. Skull's my brand, but lots of guys start with mild happy days. Either way, you're going with a winner. Can I have your autograph, Mr. Mercer? Mm -hmm. For my husband? Mm. Smokeless tobacco. A pinch is all it takes.
Reaching your financial goal is never as simple as some people would have you believe. You have to know exactly where you're going and make the right decisions at the right time. At Merrill Lynch, it's our skill at guiding you through the intricacies of investing that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. There are broadcasters here from all over the world. There you see it. Japan. Shogun. There's a strike to Hal McRae. Hal McRae, Minnesota's and Clint Hurdle. Ruthven has struck out four. He has not walked a man. He has retired the last eight that he has faced. Bouncy ball. Schmidt has it. Nine in a row. Unofficially, that I've got the tenth ground ball out that Ruthven has thrown, so he must be sinking the ball pretty well, Tom. Throwing the ball extremely well, uh, Tony. I talked to Bob Boone before the game. He said, Ruthven, since the All-Star break, has pitched as well as anybody on the staff and as consistently as anybody on the staff, including Steve Carlton. He's come back from elbow surgery, took the bone chips out of his elbow, didn't pitch too well early. And then once those summer months, those warm months came around, they said he's pitched as well as anybody for the Philadelphia Phillies. Would have been a 20-game winner had he been able to pitch a little bit longer in the spring in some of the games he was in. There's the first pitch in a strike one. Here is Amos Otis, who said earlier, well, yesterday, hey, we played the last three games where nobody has cheered for us. But tonight, it's a different story. Fans are a factor. It used to be they would just write about fans as being intimidators of officials and what have you. But it's a positive side now. Philly fans in Philadelphia, here in Kansas City. Same thing. One ball and one strike. One out. We're in the bottom of the seventh all tied two apiece. Extend his arms. Otis likes the ball up and out over the plate right there. Good power to the opposite field. It's amazing. Ruthven only nine home runs all year long. He's given up two in this game. They want him to come out. The fans will not stop. They want him to come out. Amos Otis. One and one to count on Hurdle. There you see Amos Otis. What a series he's having. He is seven for 12, two home runs, five runs batted in. He's got seven putouts in this game. Record for an outfielder is eight. Roush and George Foster, both of Cincinnati. He's done it all. There's Willie Mays Aikens. Next to him, saying, We're going to do it. And there's a strike to hurdle. This Kansas City club is fired up. They have to be. Big, big game. This one, you can almost hear the hammer hit the nails on that fourth one. Line drive, base hit. Don't know, Tom, if it's a sign of tire, but he was up to that pitch also to hurt it. Second pitch in a row, he's gotten up and out over the plate, Tony. Going about 88 pitches, Paul Moscow tells me now. My statistician on my right hand side here. A lot of fastballs tonight. The radar gun downstairs has him about 87, 88 miles per hour. 
Apparently Dallas Green thinks he's all right. That bullpen out there, they look like a choir. They're just sitting out there, nothing happening. Right got Daryl Porter. I got to believe Booney's out to tell him one thing. If you're going to try and sink that ball, you better get downstairs a little more, not belt high like you've had the last few. Kansas City leading three to two. Bottom of the seventh. Out of play. Strike one. Home run by Brett. Home run by Otis. Triple and a single. The extra base hits. One and one. Ideally in this situation Tony you try to keep the ball away from Darrell Porter and hope he tries to pull it if he does pull it he put it right on the ground to the second baseman Manny Trio. Quick throw he's back. There he goes. It's fouled out of play. Hit and run play. They try to stay away from the double play. Too many times people think of the hit and run play as an offensive play where it's a first and third situation but it's really a defensive play as far as the offense is concerned. I don't want to get that involved, but you want to stay away from the double play. That's what the perp that's the purpose of the hit and run play. It's not to make a big inning. It's just to keep an inning going. Hurl a likely guy to try and send in the steal situation. He doesn't run that well. About average. Try to open a hole in that field. Two balls and two strikes. I always felt as a catcher that if they try hit and run play before two and two that they would try it on two and two again because it's obvious they're going to run on three and two. So you're really spinning your wheels back there as Booney is doing. He's got to look for him to go on his pitch hit and run play. Let's see what happens. Holding. Outside. And Daryl Porter in a tough situation. We look at the Kansas City bench. Jimmy Fry looking on. And there is Jimmy's mother. She looks pretty calm. He looks pretty nervous. Three and two the count. One out. There goes the runner. Strike three. The throw is not in time. Stolen base for Hurdle. He goes three and two breaking ball on him, doesn't he, Tom? And he got it upstairs. Booty comes up throwing on those bad knees. Larry Boa thinks he got a piece of him. Here comes Hurdle, Dutch Renner, moving into perfect position. He's got it. Second time in a row that he's gone to three and two and thrown the breaking ball. A good throw of Booney gotten off a real good one. I think he'd have had him easily. He did tag him, but I think his foot was on the bag. That replay showed. And it was really a strictly a hit and run play because he was trying to find the ball. That's his first stolen base of the season for Hurdle. Well, UL Washington, the batter, he was really looking back. Not only that for Hurdle, it's his first attempt at a stolen base according to the official records. He may have been involved in hit and runs. There it is. He got him on the right hand, but as Dutch Renard points out, he had his foot on the bag. UL Washington has hit the ball hard twice. Fouls this one out of play. Maddox in center field plays him in left center and the first time up in the third inning he had a line drive right at him there you see the defense and then the next time up Maddox was playing right where he is right now in left center field Washington hit it in right center field but his great speed Maddox was able to make the play one strike two outs bottom of the seventh Kansas City leading three to two. Willie Wilson on deck. Fastball is high. Home run by George Brett. The first triple, the single, the fourth. There is Willie Wilson. You saw him on deck. Triple by Aikens. The single by McRae. And a home run by Otis here in the seventh inning. The three runs. Schmidt, a big home run for the Philadelphia Phillies. They got their other run in the second. There's Amos Otis who hit the big home run. Joe, as an infielder, you should have just one thing in mind in this situation with two outs and a very important run at second base. You might move a little bit deeper, 
jockey back and forth to hold the runner close if you can. But play deep and you've got to knock the ball down. You've got to prevent that run from scoring. Two outs. Two balls and one strike to count on UL. Your comment is exactly right. I think Ruther's getting tired throwing a lot of high fastballs. Dallas Green has double action duty going down in the bullpen down there. Bobby Wine, Herbst direct Dallas Green to the left of your screen. Billy's bench, they're down by one. 3 1 pitch. It's pop foul. Schmidt near the stands. He'll have a play. He makes the play. So that ends the inning as UL Washington fouls out to Mike Schmidt. And Amos Otis, the hero of the day, there he is, his home run to right field. Broke the tie at the end of seven complete innings to score. Kansas City three, the Phillies two. And it'll be two up, Manny Trio, Larry Boa, and Bob Boone. I'm pro quarterback Joe Theismann. I'm pro photographer, Scott Barrow. I rely on my quickness, my arm, and my big buddies. I rely on my Canon AE-1 with an auto winder that's as quick as Theismann and a telephoto lens that's as powerful as his arm. So I can catch the throw and catch the catch. Hey, Scott, it's my turn now. Going out for a pass. All right. With the AE-1, it's easy to shoot like a pro. The incomparable Canon AE-1. So advanced, it's simple. Take it easy. You know, I was known for working long and hard during training camp. Why, even after my teammates were asleep, I'd still be out practicing my moves, and that's still important. So I drink light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. It's got a third less calories than a regular beer, and the best thing is it's less filling. Because, listen, I still train the same way as the old days. Practice, practice, practice. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Here's your chance to get the official 1980 World Series souvenir program, the same one sold at the ballpark. It's a collector's item commemorating the 77th Fall Classic. Send check or money order for $3 to World Series Program, Box 1980, Norwood, New Jersey, 07648. It's filled with World Series glamour, history, and statistics. That's World Series Program, Box 1980, Norwood, New Jersey. Act now. Quantities are limited. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Game three, and you're looking at Royal Stadium, where some 42,380 fans are here. In a ballpark that seats, they say, officially some 40,000. About 2,300 real skinny people in here, I'll tell you that. Manny Trio. First pitch, left field, down the line, it is out of play. Trio scored a run in the second inning. He doubled in the third inning, hit into a double play in the fifth. Trio is three for nine in the World Series. says I'll take this one Amos one out. Otis has been a busy man if Otis would have taken that he would have tied Ed Roush and George Foster for put outs Roush had eight of them in 1919 George Foster in 1976. Larry Boa. Tries to hit it by Brett, who is near the line and in close. Standard one. Standard procedure for this late in the ball game. A close game right on the line. Take away the double. How many times does an infielder do that to bait the guy, Tony? You mean stay cl that close to the line or come in? Come in. Yeah, he may come in when the pitch is on the way. He may back up. So you uh, can take that butt away from him when he sees you, because most hitters from the left side who can butt like ball. They look down at that third baseman. When they look away to pick up the pitch, you might sneak back. 1-1 pitch. Strike two. 
just as Brett and you saw him guarding the line Willie Wilson in left field guards the left field line. Here's a good look at Martin's curveball and they say that he's got as good a curveball at times as Burt, Burt Blylevin who's over with the Pittsburgh Pirates now and then that Tony that's a downer that goes straight down. It's an optical illusion. High chopper going to be a tough play. Larry Bob safe. Play that was made right there is made by Willie Mays Aikens because he came off that back. He is not the most mobile guy. There's Ruben Amaro talking to Bowen. The catcher, Bob Boone. But if Aikens doesn't stop that ball from going in the corner, Bowen is on at least second, probably third. Here it is again. Rennie Martin bare hands it. Watch Aikens. Digs it out, stops it because Clint Hurdle, the right fielder, was playing in right center field for Bowen. He would have run all night. Here's a view from the right field camera. Aikens making a very good play on that. Boa definitely would have ended up on third base. That was his third base hit of the night, three for four. They had a hit and run combine going last time with Boone batting. Boa, good lead, one out. Holding outside, ball one. Now, here was the count that he went last time. That's the kind of thing that you try to clock, remember, and put in your own computer and say, hey, he ran on the second pitch. Let's see. Both bullpens with a couple guys going right now. Holding. It's a strike. Philly bullpen. Ron Reed on the left. Warren Brewster on the right. Reed gave him a good, strong inning in game number two. Struck out two of three. One ball, one strike, one out. Reed two, Kansas City leading. Eighth inning. High. Oh, a decoy. Gave a good false start over at first base. Watch ball. He'll decoy. Try and pull the third uh, shortstop or second baseman out of position. Even though UL Washington nor Frank White moved, all you got to do is lean a little bit on this turf and the ball can get by you. Here's the manager's delight. Two and one. He wanted to go. He was leaning. He put some pressure on the old shoestrings. Ball backs out. He wants to go. Remember Billy Herman used to always say on pitch outs and throws the first I knew that they weren't really worried about any trick plays holding inside now he's in trouble. He's got to make a good pitch now Tom. There's a young pitcher had pretty good confidence in that curveball with a two and one count throw on a curveball to Booney but Booney is a dead fastball hitter but he's down to three and one. He doesn't want to put the tie and run down at second base and walk Booney. Three balls one strike one out. Oh lead there he goes. Center field Amos Sotis will tie the record with that catch there it is his eighth put out. Boa back at first. There you see him. He had a big home run, broke the 2 2 tie. He just goes into the record books along with Ed Roush of Cincinnati and George Foster of Cincinnati. And Boone has tried Amos Otis three different times. He flied out in the fourth to Otis, and the sixth to Otis, and the eighth to Otis. He's got to try somebody else because I think Otis can catch it. Chop down. Put it on the ground. <laughs> Lonnie Smith, two for four. It's a strike of curveball. We call it a curveball, but I tell you, in the old neighborhood, you call that baby a drop. There's Pete Rose on deck. He likes to keep that bat clean because then he can see where the ball hit. He wipes it down all the time. Outside, one ball, one strike. Smith taking a good look at Lee Elia. Elia is a very vibrant coach at third base. He's the guy that when Trio hit the triple against Houston, he didn't know what to do. He was hugging him so much, he finally ended up biting him on the arm. <laughs> and he, it was a welt. <laughs> one and one to count. Two outs. There goes Boa. Porter can't hold it. Stolen base. I'm not certain Darrell would have had a shot anyway. He got a good one to throw on. 
Fastball high and away. Watch Darrell pop out from behind home plate as Bo is moving. He stayed too low in the crouch. He never came out. Never uh, came out. Enough. Here it is, Tommy. Good jump by Larry Boa getting off there. Darrell Porter never had got his hand on the ball to throw it. Kept this. You got to get your hand on the ball before you can throw it. Larry Boa, I think, would have had it stolen anyway. Got a very good jump from first base. A tying run now at second base. The very beginning, Porter was having troubles. Never got out of that crouch. Here's a pitch outside. You look at this infield now, they have really moved back. White is deep. Even though Lonnie Smith runs well, they're going to give him the chopper in the infield. Look at that. UL Washington deep at short. Frank White deep at second with two outs. Keep that ball in the infield. Give him the little chop single. 3 1 pitch with two outs. Time run at second. Curveball. You talk about confidence in your curveball, and that's the sign of the good pitcher. When he can throw something besides the fastball when he's behind 3 and 1 or 2 and 0. Oh. Three and one, he throws a curveball, and the man on deck, if he doesn't get this over, is Pete Rose sitting over there coming up with a tie and run at second base. That's a lot of confidence in a situation like that to throw the curveball. Hit the bat. Would have been ball four. That was a big, big pitch. And I'll tell you, if you were a scout, you'd have to you'd have no question about Mr. Martin's heart. Another situation of a crucial pitch, and he goes with the best one that he has, a curveball. The old philosophy, if I'm going to get beat, I'm going to get beat with the best pitch, the curveball. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Eighth inning. Royals leading three to two. High walk team. And that brings up Pete Rose. Mike Schmidt is on deck. I say that because Rose would not be immune to getting hit by a pitch or whatever. All right, Tom, got to ask you. The left side, is Rose a good breaking ball hitter? He Rose a good off speed breaking ball hitter. I think and he's. They, I think the Royals have found that out and they've thrown him nothing but fastballs tonight and nothing but hard stuff inside. They'll go away occasionally. He struck out on a fastball away. But for the main part, they want to throw him hard stuff in. I think they found out very early that he can hit that off speed and that breaking stuff. Rose is 0 for 10 in his World Series. Ball one. Two outs. Smith is on at first base. Boa is on at second base. Good speed on the bases. And they'll be off at the crack of the bat. Fouled out of play. Tried to go to the opposite side. One ball, one strike, two outs. Heat Rose. I guess everybody knows how durable Pete Rose has been. He played all 162 games in this season, all the championship series games, but I got to believe, even as strong as he is, his bat has slowed down late this season. That's why, you see by him. That's why you see him choking up so much, too, Tony. It's the first time I've seen him choked up that far. It was the first year in my career that I've seen him choke up so far. Line drive does his first base hit, and here comes the run across Boa. Smith heads for third, and we're tied up once again, and Mike Schmidt is the batter. Rose is not going to use that bat again because you can hear it shatter all the way up here. High and tight, it looked like, Tom. Pete Rose is the one guy that was out here taking extra batting practice after the Phillies had gone in yesterday, working on hitting the ball to right field. Looked like he was trying to fill. Feed that ball out to right field. Another look at Rose with another angle. You can see how much he's choked up. Turning that top hand over, pulling the ball to right field. Tom, when you jam a guy like that and get it up, you can loop it to the outfield. But if he makes the pitch down a little bit, chances are that might have been a ground ball. It may have sneaked through. So we're all tied up, and these Phillies continue to battle back. The Royals battle. We've got a dandy on our hands. We've got a break in the action. Mike Schmidt with base runners in first and third. We'll be back. Right guard knows a man sweats more than a woman. That's why a man needs right guard. Right guard has a male effectiveness formula, a formula so strong, more men cover it to help stop perspiration odor every day. Right guard knows there's a difference between you. Men perspire more. 
that's what right guard's for. What we need is a bigger house. What we need is financing. Where do we get it? We handle the where do you get it? How much down? But what are you going to do? Trust the Realty World folks in blue to cover it all. Your local Realty World associate is specially trained to cover all the bases in finding you a new home, including financing information. Realty World will cover all the details. Engineers from America and overseas have created a world car. The new Ford Escort. The four-door Escort liftgate has higher mileage ratings than Volkswagen Jetta or Toyota Corona. Yet Escort also gives you more room inside. And Escort gives you the privacy of a hideaway luggage compartment and wagon room when you need it. Ford Escort, built in America to take on the world. On NBC Sports World, see the Michael Spinks Yaki Lopez Slugfest, the world's top bowlers in the legends of bowling, plus a World Series update Saturday. So, 3-3, three, three. Quisenberry loosening up. We'll pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Saturday at 7 is Big City Comedy with guest Fred Willard on KNBC Los Joe Angeles. Joe with Tony Kubek, Tom Seaver. We've got a dandy going right here. Mike Schmidt, the batter. The third base coach, Mike Schmidt. Quisenberry who was a pitcher in Philadelphia. He got three ground balls in his first inning and then really got jumped on through nothing but fastballs, and that's all the Phillies were talking about. He is a sinker baller. Mike Schmidt with a tremendous home run in the fifth. He's one for three. Bunts it down the third base line. Foul. How do you like that? Two men out, Brett playing back, and Brett flips the ball up as if to say, what in the world is going on? But Lonnie Smith would have scored, and Schmidt has better than average speed. Quisenberry, with that sinker ball, keeps, gets a lot of ground balls. He's a good guy to butt off anything going down, coming into you, breaking ball. A little bit off speed, he doesn't throw that hard. Tries to score the run that way. Brett had to come a long way, and you can see why. You know, they talk about background when certain guys are pitching. Pete Rose said about Quisenberry, he said he uses the rosin bag for a background. What makes that bunt important now is because if you look down at George Brett at third, he's come in about four or five steps closer than the first pitch to Schmidt, which means a ground ball could sneak by him. Now he's backing off. Two outs. Side. Looked like a breaking ball. He didn't throw any in Philadelphia. All fastballs over in Philadelphia. There's a good shot of Brett moving in a little bit, but he'll back up before Quisenberry pitches. Last time Schmidt faced Quisenberry, got an inside, low and in fastball hit off the right field wall in Philadelphia. Broken bat, Looper, oh, is coming hard, hard. He's there, makes the catch, and now he's got the record all to himself as he's got nine putouts. Quisenberry gets a big, big out. And there is Janie Quisenberry and the brand new baby. Mommy's happy, but the baby says, just let me sleep. Daddy's going to be all right. Is that a beautiful baby? 3-3 three, three, as we go into the bottom of the eighth. That two-up will be Willie Wilson, Frank White, and George Brett. Bring the world closer with a camera that lets you get closer than any other. Can I take your picture? Polaroid's SX-70 Sonar. Now you can hold the moment here in your hand. Now even when the moment ends. The Polaroid SX-70 Sonar. You'll share the moment once again. Could you picture yourself with any other instant camera? John Burns joined the Army in March and kept us waiting until October. Kathy Wolf joined the Army in May and kept us waiting all summer. If you're a high school graduate or about to be, you can join the Army now and take up to 12 months to report for duty. 
that way, if you qualify, we can guarantee you the skill training that makes you happiest. And we think a happy soldier is worth waiting for. This is the Army, a chance to serve your country as you serve yourself. Call this number toll free. Excuse me. I'm not the same crazy coach who used to storm around the sidelines yelling at the officials. I've learned to relax, and I drank light beer from Miller. Do you know that light's got a third less calories than their regular beer? And listen to this. Light doesn't fill me up. Besides that, light tastes fantastic. Oh, sure, there are a lot of other beers around, and you can drink any one you want. But let me tell you this. For light my beer way, from Miller. I Everything you always wanted in a beer, else. and less. As I was saying, I don't care what anybody else... We head for the bottom of the eighth of game three, a very big inning for the Royals, one they need desperately to avoid falling behind 3-0. In games, we are tied at three as we start the bottom of the eighth. Phil's got two off Rich Gale, one more off Remy Martin, as they've done throughout this series, they've come from behind. But on the minus side, Philadelphia has stranded 12 runners. That is odd, especially when you consider that through the first two games, they only stranded nine. As for the Royals, their four power boys continue to produce. George Bratt and Amos Otis with solo home runs. Willie Akins and Hal McRae combining for the other run. The problem for Kansas City has been that they are getting nothing out of Willie Wilson. He is 1 for 12 with seven strikeouts, hitting just 083 as he steps in against Dick Ruthven. Joe? Okay, Brian. Bill Kunkel came all the way in from right field to tell Paul Pryor something. Couldn't have been too important. He's going back out there. And we're ready to go. Willie Wilson. Brian told you, not doing much. Takes a strike. And the bullpen, Chuck McGraw, loosening up for the Philadelphia Phillies. They'll have McBride, Moreland, and Maddox. Their batters in the ninth. We're tied three apiece. is out. Second baseman Frank White. One out and Frank White is a batter. White bounced out twice and struck out. it back and it's strike one. Dallas Green looking on. He feels some of the pressure obviously but he's leading by two. And George Brett the on deck batter he got him off with a home run in the first. The Royals have to feel more pressure. Foul ball. They are trailing in the series two games to none. Joe we've talked about the Phillies coming back in the games that they played so far and even throughout this game every time that the Royals have scored the Phillies have come back in the very next half of an inning and tied the game right back up. The Royal pitchers have not been able to hold the Phillies. White disgusted as he is out on strike six strikeouts for Ruthman. Talking about coming from behind as George Brett comes up but listen to his hand. George Brett, he's the man for these fans who dresses in the telephone booth. They're tied. gets it back in so Brett is on again. George Brett hits upstairs again. I think Brett and Rod Carew in the American League get the good part of the bat on the ball more than any others. Brett ran very well from home plate to second base. Gary Maddox with the ball in quickly. Brett a double in the first inning hit a home run and that really got these fans going here it is off he speed really pitch going. off speed pitch from Ruthven first time up today got it down to the strike zone and low George waited on it well 
Brett, there he is. Five for his last six times at bat. Side ball one. Minor surgery yesterday. Here he is. Two outs. Aikens. It's two home runs and a triple to his credit in this World Series. George Brett, he'll have to score from second base on a single, and he said he's never slid head first, but he might have to break it out tonight. There's a strike. He told his manager when he took himself out of the game in Philadelphia, I don't know if I can score from second base. And that was enough for Fry. There you see Dallas Green and the Phillies. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Fry and his coaching staff. Get it, two balls and two strikes on Aikens. The Phillies talking about coming from behind, and only six come from behind wins in September. They've come from behind to win all five times in postseason play, and they're coming from behind to tie it. Now the Royals have a chance to break it, and this crowd is reacting. Seven strikeouts for Ruthman. That ends the eighth inning. So we complete eight innings to score here. The Philadelphia Phillies, as we look at this, looks like a fastball. Fastball on the inside corner, and he really set that up beautifully, Joe. Off speed pitch before that came back with a fastball inside. Here's Brett's reaction, saying exactly what's happening, communicating with his coaches on the strikeout. Aiken doesn't even swing the bat. And George just a bit disgusted. Disgusted in the fact they didn't score. So 3-3 three, three at the end of eight. And two up for the Phillies. McBride, Moreland, and Maddox. Introducing an American car designed for a changing world and with a commitment to quality. The beautifully new Ford Granada in a new smaller size with its highest mileage ratings ever. And with Ford's attention to detail, every door is hand adjusted. Every seat is hand fitted. Every car is examined by 38 quality inspectors. The kind of detail you can see, feel, and hear. The new Granada, built for a changing world from Ford. I told my Allstate agent I can't afford life insurance. Well, John, don't put marbles in the penny wrappers. He told us about one of Allstate's affordable life plans. For a 28-year-old, $50,000 of decreasing term insurance for about $11 a month. These pennies could pay for a couple of months. Well, John... Well, you put your pennies in my marble jar. Ask about Allstate Life's affordable life plans. You're in good hands with Allstate. Heavy hitting AFC action featuring the Battling Bills versus the Never Say Die Dolphins. Check local listings for the game in your area. Make McBride against Quisenberry. McBride fly to left, single to right, struck out, and fly to center. He is one for four. Brett in close to third, Aikens back at first. Defense, Brett. Aikens back. Shading him just a bit towards right center field. There's one and one. Presenberry, as you know, had a rough outing the last time out in the championship series game, but Bill Kunkel, the man in the right field line that was behind the plate that day, and he said that Quisenberry, and it was a guess, was throwing 12, 15 miles per hour, less hard than he ordinarily does. Kunkel's had him a lot this season. Two balls and one strike. He had 33 saves during the season, which tied him with Goose Gossage for the most in the American League. Can't get it. Base hit left field. That brings up Keith Moreland. Tiebreaker is on at first. 
We'll have game four tomorrow, but tomorrow, following the World Series, four o'clock Eastern time, Sports World returns. And we got a 10 round light heavyweight fight between Michael Spinks and Yaki Lopez, and some of the greatest names in bowling. It's tomorrow on Sports World, four o'clock Eastern time, following the World Series right here on NBC Sports. Royals looking for a bunt. Brad has sneaked in. Aikens will be charging. DHs ordinarily don't do a lot of bunting. In the American League, anyway. Bun here takes it high, and it's ball one. He'll make that Aikens field it if he can. Crowd just buzzing. We're in the ninth. Nobody out. There's Brett. Here they come. High ball two. Here's, where you, here's some great conversations like we can't feel it if you don't throw a strike. It's unusual for Quisenberry to pitch high. That's McBride being held by Aikens at first. But in an in almost absolute bunt situation, he's trying to throw the ball up high to get him to try and pop it up. So they can always put a switch on you as you look at Fry. There's his strike. Morin doesn't think so, but that doesn't make any difference. It's two balls and one strike. Nobody out. Last pitch, Tommy. Last pitch from the center field camera. Definitely a bunt situation. Paul Pryor raises that right hand and would consider that a National League strike. No. There goes Bake McBride. It's foul back. What do you mean, and not a National League strike? What do, you, what do you think is the difference? Obviously, we have a National League umpire behind the plate tonight. They alternate here in the World Series tomorrow night. Afternoon, we'll have an American League umpire. The consensus among the players is that the American League strike zone is a little bit higher. As you look at Keith Moreland, might be right up there in the P for his Phillies on his uniform, whereas in the National League, a little bit above the belt might be the strike zone. Two balls and two strikes. Quick throw. It was close, but he made it back. Nobody out. We're tied. 3 3, ninth inning. In time. Fake McBride. 13 of 23 stealing. High fly ball, left field, near the line. Wilson has time. Fake McBride tagging up. We may have a race. Here it is. Not in time. Fake McBride very alertly went back. And there aren't very many coaches that can help you, although Amara was screaming his lungs out. There are a lot of major league players who don't take advantage of this situation, who will just go halfway. But look at McBride. Aikens looks like he doesn't even see him, but McBride, very alertly, as you said, Joe, the ball is a deep in that left field corner. Wilson got it as fast as he could, but McBride made a nice piece of base running. He coached himself. He saw the ball was going to be caught. He headed back and he picked up a big base. Looks like they may be putting Maddox on. Trio is the on deck batter. They're going to put him on and set up a double play. There's ball one. I'll tell you, a lot of people say they should eliminate this and just point to first base. I disagree thoroughly because of many weird things happen here. How about the Oakland A's one year? Johnny mentioned the bat. Three and two count and rally fingers on the orders of manager Dick Williams through a slider right down low in the outside corner. Strikeout bench. There's trio on deck along with Boa. So the situation now finds Bake McBride at second base. Gary Maddox is on at first base. One man out. Manny Trio is the batter. Trio single and scored in the second inning. He doubled in the third, hit into a double play in the fifth, and he fly to center field in the eighth. Now's the time that Quisenberry has to say to himself, if the ball's hit back to me, I throw it where? And obviously, second base. It's basic and all that. They want the rosin back. Time is called now. Quisenberry also wants to know to whom he should lead, so he's already communicated with UL Washington White. Who's going to be there to take the throw so he leads the right man? Off 
his foot. Trio on a strike one. The reason I bring that up is because Gale in that second inning play, and yet he didn't throw to the plate. And Lonnie Smith gets an RBI as Trio scores. Should have been possibly a double play. One thing that Quisenberry with this sinker that he has, the underhand sinker that he developed from Kent to Colby. You can see it there. Manny Trio drives it right down into his foot. Still a little bit uncomfortable. But one thing the Royals have told us is that Quisenberry has been able to come all year long and throw the double play ball when they need it. They need it right here. Let's see what happens. Bunt it, but bunt it foul. And it is strike two. Look at that. Don't know what she's doing, but she may be going right to the top. It looks like Manny Trio's wife, Maria. I don't know who the lady was. Two strikes. Chopper Willie Mays Aikens to Quisenberry in time and Beck McBride had some ideas but Quisenberry very alertly faked the throw and drove him back it was close that was a tough tough play by that man right there Willie Aikens but they made it well he almost got a slow jump over and then he ran parallel the line and Tommy was a good sinker by Quisenberry and boy he did the right thing because he took one step after the bag and he looked to McBride rounded third base and had thoughts of going home. Quisenberry has a reputation of being an outstanding fielder. It was a good play by both the first baseman and the pitcher. Those basic fundamentals that you work on pay off all year long. Quisenberry works very hard on the fundamentals and just did get many three up by about 10 inches. Here is Larry Boa. They play him towards the left field line. They crowd him at third base. They crowd him at first. He's a bunning threat at any time. High chopper. Quisenberry has You're drinking Diet Pepsi Cola with just one calorie and that great honest to Pepsi taste. And it shows in the way you look, the way you feel, and in everything you do. Diet Pepsi. One small calorie, one great taste. Hey, you sold out of Gillette Track too. <laughs> Delivery's coming any second. But why should a busy man like you have to wait when this razor will do? Gillette Track 2 shaves me closer and smoother than that. I'll wait. These will fit your Track 2 handle. I know what I'm getting with Track 2 twin blades, but those, I'll wait. But, but to guys who use Gillette Track 2, no other blade will do. Ah. Track, track 2? two? Ah. We'll, we'll wait. wait. Gillette, when it comes to shaving, we give you the edge. We're proud. Come on, say it again. Proud. We've got a lot to smile about. Proud. In a special way, we're gonna light your nights and fill your days. Make you laugh, make you cry, make you see the reason why we're proud to be, yeah, NBC. Proud to bring you the Sphinx Lopez Light Heavyweight Bout Saturday. NBC proud as a big rock. So, bottom of the ninth, Hal McRae leads it off. have left 14 men on base outside. Tied a record and these fans, they want to run. Base hit, left field.
time up in the seventh. Here's what Aoba Sotis did. He got a fastball out over the plate. He had a home run toward right center field. Off Lutman. Now it will be interesting. A left-hander is throwing. McGraw's back up in the bullpen for the Phillies. And you've got Otis up. Looks like a bunt situation. And two left-handed hitters, Hurdle and Porter. McGraw. Well, you see Tuck McGraw throwing in the bullpen. Whether Bob Boone went out to the mound there to stall for a little bit of time. Tuck was not throwing at the beginning of this inning. Ruben has thrown only 112 pitches so far. And whether he was stalling, Boone was stalling for a little bit of time for Dallas Green. We'll find out very shortly. Certainly a bunch situation. Because if Otis gets him over, they'll probably walk Hurdle, and he apparently has decided to let his man of the hour. Now they want to look at the ball because Otis has been a red hot hitter. Came in five for nine with one home run, four RBIs. Home run tonight, a single in the second. He has been hot. And somebody has to make a decision. Jim Fry on the first pitch says, I want him to hit. Bunts of foul. He was going the right way, Joe, because Schmidt was looking down his throat, and of course Rose has to hold the runner out. Herm Sturet in front of Dallas Green, the manager. There's the Kansas City bench. Tony talked about it in our opening when he said it's obvious and maybe an oversimplification, but the team that bats last has an edge, and here they are, batting in the bottom of the ninth. One ball, two strikes. The home fans, they're as tense as the players as Otis takes a look at Gordy McKenzie. He wants to know if McRae is breaking it first. does this very well. I don't know as hard as that ball was hit how he got down that quickly. He slides ducks the ball. Trio with a nice relay. He knew that McCray was barreling down into him and let's watch Hal McCray from that left center field camera. The slide under the ball then go to his roadblock. Look at Trio Lopez. That ball just went by his head. Hurdle. by Larry Boyle saving the ball from going into left field. I doubt if it would have made any difference. He just doesn't quite have as strong a throwing arm as he used to. I tell you, two or three years ago, Larry Boyle would have thrown Clint Hurdle out at first base. And he's hurt. When he dove, Tommy, I don't know if he landed on his left or right shoulder, but he jammed one of his left shoulder, it looks like. His glove hand, which could be painful when he tries to extend and reach for a ball. There's Boyle. The ball is hit very sharply and skidding away from him, slicing away, made an even better play. What a nice try he made. Joe, we're going to have a pitch runner now. Hurdle leaves. He's being pitch run for Onyx Concepcion. Same name as Davey, your teammate, but no relationship. Concepcion is on as the pinch runner. 
Porter. He is 0 for 6 in this World Series. Sepp Schill down on first base because he has good speed and steals, but well, we'll see what Jimmy Fry wants to do, but with Porter up, you wouldn't want to take the bat out of his hand with that hole open. All on. Inning open with McBray. Single and a double play ball hit by Otis. Bob Boone, the Golden Glove winner for catchers in the National League, one of the outstanding defensive receivers. Makes a nice, clean pickup. Inside, two balls, no strikes. That was a super play because he caught the ball. The big play is to get in front of it, which he was. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Bottom of the ninth, tied, 3 3, two outs. Excepcion, the pinch runner for Herbert. Didn't get it. Two balls, one strike. I'm surprised, Tony, they're not running. I would think they'd put him in in a situation to get him down to second base so they can score a run with a base hit. Well, I think the thought is that it, it could happen now, two balls and one strike. Get a moving or a single, he might be able to score with that great speed. Three balls and one strike. Manny Trio at second base is literally playing a short right field. He's about 10, 15 feet behind that line, is drawn. There you see him. He's way back there. Look at that. He is deep. He's playing quarter to pull. He just gets more range from there. The outfielders are back to cut down the alleys. High fly ball. Bank McBride should have no problem. He doesn't. So that ends the inning. We have extra innings here at the end of nine innings. Here in Kansas City, we're all tied. The Philadelphia Phillies three, the Kansas City Royals three. Trinity's two up for the Phillies. It'll be Bob Boone, Smith, and Rose. I have time in the 1980 World Series. We're going to extra innings to try to decide this issue. As we start the 10th, we're deadlocked at three. The Royals have made a change. Jose Cardinal moves to right in place of Clint Hurdle. The pinch runner was sent in for in the bottom of the ninth. For the Royals, they've got to be bemoaning the loss of that run that Rich Gale had. Bases loaded, one out early on in the ball game. Let a run score when he could have turned it into a double play. And as for the Phillies, as they come up in the 10th with Boone, Smith, and Rose, they've got to be wondering, Joe, about those 14 base runners they've stranded. And that set a record, as you said earlier. They have to be thinking about his right, Brian, as Boone takes it. It's one ball and one strike. Cardinal in right field. Placing hurdle. Boone tries to bunt, misses it. One ball, two strikes. Boone walked in the second and then flied out to center field three different times. So he's 0 for 3. There you see the on deck man, Lonnie Smith. Pete Rose will follow him. There's a base hit by Bob Boone. One ball, two strikes. And Otis is up with it, gets it back in a hurry. Tom Quisenberry's thrown very few of those fork balls. That's looked what that was, or was it a breaking pitch? But he got it up again. He sold basically fastballs. Either the slider or the fork ball, I don't know which it was. He threw two pretty good fastballs to him, and then he throws something else, something out over the plate that he could drive to right field. Didn't hit it real well, but certainly enough to get on base. The thing that will drive a Pitcher and drive a manager crazy in a game like this. You want to get that first out in the inning. Takes the bent away, sets up the double play to, to get you out of an inning. You let that first hitter get on, you start digging yourself a hole. And we've got a pinch hitter coming up, Greg Gross, an excellent bunner. And that's one question Jim Fry will have to answer in the post game interviews, win or lose, why he didn't bunt with Otis in the ninth inning because the second guesses will be flying over the body. Outside, ball one. Well, five of the last eight games, all postseason games, Phillies have been involved in have been extra innings, so they should be used to the pressure. Bunt 
it beautifully. Aikens will tag him down the second base. Goes Bob Boone. The tiebreaker is on second. And Pete Rose is the batter. There you see little Petey Rose, who's acting as a bat boy, as his daddy goes up to hit. Jim Fry. He's going to say, walk him, give him four. They're going to put Pete Rose on intentionally. Set up the double play. Mike Schmidt is the on-deck batter. It'll be up to Mike Schmidt. Patton, a right hander. Ken Brett, isn't it? That's what it is. There it is, ball four. So Rose is on it first. Boone is on it second. One man out. Mike Schmidt is a batter. He walked in the first, fly to left, hit a homer in the fifth, hit into a force play in the sixth, and fly to center. That showing a little respect for Pete Rose. He drove in a big run in the eighth, broke his bat. Strict percentages by Fry, but he was only one for 11 in the championships, uh, this World Series. Quisenberry against Schmidt. Boone at second. We're tied, three apiece. say we're exaggerating if we tell you on this line drive that it's like a routine play for Frank White. He made three sensational plays against the Yankees in one ball game that may have saved four or five runs. He has a great pair of hands and excellent range. He just saves Quisenberry. And the Phillies now have left 15 men on with the Adam ball. Right at him. And we go to the bottom of the 10th. It'll be UL Washington. Wilson and White. We're tied. Well, with runners on first and second, one out, Mike Schmidt off Quisenberry, trying to drive the ball hard to right field. He does down the way, but look who's there. Frank White, winner of three consecutive gold gloves in the American League, and he turns it into this double play to save the Royals and Quisenberry. They say he's got a knack for turning the double play. Quisenberry does when he comes in. The a little unusual this time. I'm not sure that this is the way they'd like to have it, but they certainly do turn a crucial double play. Frank White made a beautiful play on Mike Schmidt's line drive. We've got some kind of a rhubarb going on. Bill Kunkel has come in from right field again. Paul Pryor seems to disagree with him because he put up his hands. And said, I don't know, but Kunkel are going over to the dugout. He did this once before, and it looks like they're going to call Dallas Green out. And we'll get some information just as soon as we can. It's Kunkel. He's down the right field line in the American League, and Paul Pryor's behind the plate. He's the umpire in chief. Kunkel is the guy who's behind home plate in game number two. In fact, he almost missed being there. He was watching his son, Kevin, play soccer, and he had to have a police escort and just barely made game time. We will try and find out for you as soon as we can. Well, as the conference between Green, Kunkel, and Pryor goes on, we're going to ask Ron Luciano. You've been there. What's going on? Do you have any idea? Kunkel keeps pointing to the dugout. The only thing I can figure out is maybe there's an illegal person in the dugout, and Kunkel wants him out of there, and Pryor's saying, hey, there's enough people in there to start a fire now. What's the difference if you have two or three more? Kunkel's making a U-turn to tell Jim Fry what's going on. Trying to, we've got communication. We'll find out. Paul Moscow's in communication with a guy with a radar gun down by our plate. They say there's a light flashing off and on in the Philly dugout for some reason. What it's for or what it's from, it's, they're not sure, but they say there's a light seems to be flashing in the Philly dugout. Proves one thing, umpires have great eyesight. He can see it all the way from the right field foul line. One game, it's a carpenter. Tonight, it's the electrician. <laughs> Here is Chuck McGraw, who's been the workhorse for these Phillies. 
UL Washington, a switch hitter, batting right handed. Hot shot, ball can't get it. He literally ducked it. And UL is on. That was a funny way to play that ball, Tony. It sure was. Ball had not much choice except to smother it, try and knock it down in front of him. He chose what's going to turn out to be the unwise way, get out of the way. He's been a great player. It's, I'm assuming it'll be scored a base hit because it was hit so hard and in between. He might have taken it off the shin bone or knocked it down, but he chose to evade it. He was handcuffed, and UL is on with a base hit. Here is Willie Wilson. Schmidt edging in, Rose will charge hard. Second base, they'll be using the bunt. Well, a good runner. High ball two. There'd be no trick plays here for Fry. He's going to stay facing. And that's a tough thing to walk this fella. He went to bat 705 times. In fact, he makes no bones about it. He said, if I wanted to walk, I'd been a mailman. Walked 28 times only. The only other possibility of a bunt in this situation is a straight take. Make Tuck throw another pitch. Might go 3 0. At least you're still ahead if you go 2 1. Two balls, no strikes. Jim Fry. Bottom of the 10th. There you see Schmidt right in on top of him.
made the great play on that, or the good play, is Bob Boone. There were more than one good play, but he had him hung up when he butted through the ball. He fakes, which committed UL Washington to go to third. He faked him out. He went to third, and Schmidt made the next good play by getting back and make the tag. The call by Nick Bremigan. Boy, was he on the play. Here's where he's got him frozen now, Tommy. Schmidt made an outstanding play. Schmidt was moving in, but continued to check over his left shoulder, the runner at second base. Washington was able to get back in time. Fine play by Mike Schmidt and, Schmidt and Booney at home. Pitch out, nothing. Pitch out, nothing happening. Here's Booney's throw it was especially made harder because he had a, a hit a moving target in Schmidt. UL Washington tried to slide away from the tag, but Schmidt stayed right with him. Wilson's got to steal a base now. White is out on strikes. McGraw gets a big strikeout. Now Brett is the hitter. As a catcher, as we look at UL Washington, you think about that because once White missed the ball, UL took a step towards third. Boone started to throw to second. And when UL saw that, he broke another step, and Booney held it, and boom, big out at third. Brett takes a strike. Here's what you're thinking about now. If Willie Wilson steals with two outs, they'll walk Brett, their best hitter, to go against Aikens. They're going to have to nail him down to first base. Even if he makes it, it doesn't mean anything. The big play was UL Washington getting picked off. He's going to have 100 reasons, but none of them will count. Booney still thinks he's going to run. UL is really hurting. Ball players don't run on batteries. He knows what he did, except that there are millions of people who saw it. And that is not, that is not uncommon. You've done that, Joe, with a good bunter like White up. He punched through the ball, and you get picked off at second. There goes Wilson, a pitch out. He'll not get it. And right now, I imagine they'll take the bat right out of Brett's hand. You'll bet, but Akins is not going to come to the plate if they do. It'll probably be John Wathen. Here's the steal by Willie Wilson. It looks like Larry Bowen never gets to the bag. Willie Wilson's still in the base. I don't think Larry got in position to feel the ball. A good throw, and if he got in position, I think they'd have had him. They do, correctly. Take the bat out of George Brett's hand, which I don't understand. Jimmy Fry, as we look at Dallas Green and Bobby Wine tomorrow, Jimmy Fry knew that he was not going to let Aikens hit. He wants that runner in scoring position. He'll have to explain that move, but he is going to have to. Well, he's going to let Aikens in. Probably feeling that he'll take the screwball away from Tuck McGraw, and Aikens will get a fastball. The plays that they'll be thinking about if they should lose this game, Gale with the ball hit back to him, not going to the plate, and UL Washington getting picked off. You can rationalize all you want, but bad plays. They were bad plays.
play. Hey, thanks a lot. It, it was a, a fastball outside. It's just that he, he got behind in the, the count some, so just just looking for an, a fastball. Then because I kind of figured that he, he was gonna try and, and throw me a, a strike. So you were just trying to hit the ball any place, then, huh? Exactly. Uh, the first swing I took, I kind of over swung some, so I just just told myself stay back and see the ball and, and hit it wherever it's, it was. All right, Willie, what does this win, win mean to the Royals now? Well, uh, we had a, a meeting before the, the game and everything, and, and, and we, we talked about it and said, said that, that we had to go out tonight and, and win this, this baseball game. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to give all the guys on the team uh, a, a lot of, of confidence, and um, I got confidence myself that we can come back and, and win the series. Okay, Willie, good luck to you. Thanks, now let's go back to the booth, Joe. Okay, Merle, he was looking for a strike. He got it. And it's a big win, a must win for these Kansas City Royals. Final score, four to three. And I'll tell you, a lot of happy people. Watch the reactions here. Wilson sees it go down. This is Wilson rounding third. Watch his hands. He knew. There it was. And he scores the fourth run, but more important, a winning run. It made Quisenberry the winner. Straight up. McGraw the loser. Four to three. The final score. We'll be back with a wrap-up right after these messages. to bring you the Sphinx Lopez light heavyweight bout Saturday. So, Kansas City in next innings over Philadelphia, four to three. The series now stands. Two victories for Philadelphia, one for Kansas City. It'll be Christensen for the Phillies, Leonard for Kansas City tomorrow. Willie Mays Aikens, the big base hit, but Amos Otis, a big night. George Brett got him started with a home run. Final score once again, four to three, Kansas City over Philadelphia. Joe Garagiola for Tom Seaver and Tony Kubek saying so long. Game three of the 1980 World Series has been brought to you by Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi Cola bottler who invite you to catch that Pepsi spirit. And by Gillette Track 2. You guys who use the twin blade Gillette Track 2, no other blade will do. By Ford and your Ford dealers who invite you to test drive the new 1981 Ford cars and trucks. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Now stay tuned for the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson 30 minutes after your local news, except for Mountain and Pacific time zones, when it will be seen at its regular time. Once again, the final score, Kansas City 4, Philadelphia 3. Phillies lead it now two games to one. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.